It's like a pizza crunch without the butter we begin the podcast people this is just a quick message for myself to thank you for your loyal and loving support i wouldn't be sitting in this couch if it wasn't with thuties but i must ask you to support me a wee bit more my patreon is available now for subscription i would ask you please for the bottom of your heart and your bank account come and support the man help me turn this into a full-time job i've been doing this a couple of years now and i really want to progress to the next level where i can make endless content i will always feature guest episodes on youtube so so never fear, that will always be available to anybody that wants to watch them. But if you subscribe to the Patreon, you will get notified first before anybody of who that week's guest will be. You also have the option to suggest what kind of guest you'd like to see on the programme. I'll also do extra bonus content, for example, reaction videos, reaction videos to tunes, rap battles, to films, to anything that you want to see. Remember, when you are signed up to the Patreon, you have exclusive control. You suggest the content you want to see. Would you you want to watch and I'll do my best to accommodate your requests. I'll also be uploading behind the scenes footage to the Patreon so how I set up for premeditated part of what goes on off the camera that you see on YouTube will be available on the Patreon. How much do I ask for this? I ask for a five and a month. Five pounds per month is the total. That's all I ask of you and you will get this endless stream of bonus content. The love you give will also be the love you get. Enjoy the podcast, people. Then we went to go back in 2020 and COVID struck. We got cancelled. You not been back? No been back because they done all the mad fucking COVID things you couldn't get in unless you'd been vaccinated and all that shit. But they've only just lifted it. Oh, so, right, so if you know, been able to go back. No, oh, I, I go to him, but my dad and that didn't he? But now, obviously, it's opened again, so hopefully, we'll get look to go back next year. Uh, so see now, in what capacity would you go back now if you're not? Oh, I just right? means I don't. I can just enjoy it. Or can you? Just we go- we did, but to be fair, like we did, we would. be oh, my dad would have us in the gym. We would constantly have to spawn going at it, but then you kind of like as soon as that spawns done in the morning, you've got the rest of the day to. Yeah, right, we see, went I see. down to Venice Beach and. Tour my book, got to all the, uh, the theme parks and all that. Oh, really? I've yeah, never I've been to America. What? I've got a criminal that, record, that, man, so I can get That area is a different world, man. Is it? Aye. Eh? aye. It's about six times the size of Glasgow. Is it? It's so eh? big, like, even if you don't have a motor, it's hard to get yourself a book because everything's so far away. In right. Is the traffic like, no fucking terrible, but? Wild, mate. Wild. Yeah, see, yeah, see, see, if cut, moving out. see if you get cut in Russia while there. It's mm. a different thing. Yeah, gridlock. Ah, uh, your nose if it's like you got cut to the Kingston Bridge and you're stuck for an hour. Uh, stuck for about three days. Uh, you're literally parking your motor. Nah, just walk, walk. back and get it. It was just it was chaos, but the actual place itself is unbelievable. Did you go to Skid Row? No, but we were, that was everywhere's becoming that. Is it? Aye. Oh, that's with all the homeless are now because obviously if you're homeless, you've got nowhere to stay. You've got to go somewhere where the weather's the good. Didn't you? Fourth year we went. That was. Was that last the last time we went? It was either the last time or the last time before we stayed in a, a different part of a different part of LA and even like around the corner for us, it was a nice bit and it was just tense. Really? Aye, ah, yeah. just loads of tense. Is it no jailbait but like cunts because obviously some we cunts are there to fucking You see, see some some mad crackheads clo- floating about, just different world, man. You're like, but they don't they don't bother you, do you know I what I mean? It's just no. I think I'll say if you're kicking about the wrong place at the right time at night, you're kinda of maybe, mm, but that's nah. like anywhere. Aye, exactly. You know what I mean, like, uh, but, it's like kind of about the fourth corners on a Saturday night. <laughs> I can't, 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 I fucking fuck those receipts you received in there, it's just the same as earlier. <laughs> Mate, I, I think the fourth corners is just a much more condensed version. Like outside that Rennie McIntosh, you know what? That's just that's like a diluted version of Skid Row, I imagine, yeah, man. Imagine, no offence to the country, but, yeah, but yeah. you walk by Rennie McIntosh, like, you can't like piping out there. Yeah, there was just holes like that, it's all sort of tense and it's just homeless. Home, but apparently, so that's been a couple of years since we've been back now, but apparently it's like proper, proper bad. Like uh, a lot of people have left LA and that now because it's just so bad. Like you've got all these million pound houses, two million pound houses, but then right outside your door's tents. Uh, like, I know. Okay. Plus, like plus, plus, see, if I was homeless, right, and uh, I was in a place like that, see, I was like, and the bones in my arse said, fuck all. Uh, I wouldn't think twice about breaking into one of the big houses. See, or doing s- something. I swear to God, so see, we could go to Venice Beach 
in the that's the thing the muscle beach and all that see how you get did you get to there and train no we just didn't know see all the but, beef cakes but that's where you, you get all the, like, the, a lot of the homeless people and they're all just in there. they sleep in there I suppose if you're going to sleep anywhere outside mm-hmm. you'd rather sleep on the beach uh, of course but there's speed balls like set up all along the beach just like for people just to if you can pass it they can play oh, right. Mate, some of these homeless guys are unbelievable really like my dad was getting my dad was videoing one of them the guy was just hitting it with even looking at him hitting it with his elbow spinning round and you're like I could never even like mm, do you know what I mean it's just, just a pure fancy they'll just master effect. it my dad's like I'll give you $20 if you do that again let me video it and the cunts are just with the day I thought I suppose ah, if you're doing like a singing act, they've just mastered the speed ball. Do you think they've mastered it just because they're homeless in Minden now? Do you think it's obviously ex cunts, ex boxers or no? People? I think people just homeless. They're just hanging it. Then they oh, just so it's like almost people, a wee people pay them. I like people. Right. It's like singing. It's like busking. Uh, Since yeah. you're just speed bun. Uh, speed busking. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I said even still this day, I was like, I hate watching this. Like I've had all these fights, all these things, and I've, I've been boxing my whole life, and I can't do that. Mm. <laughs> I wish I would be boys. Do you think there's any kind of any any uh, benefit to doing it apart from obviously aesthetic like, just, oh, no, it looks dynamite but Jinky actually would uh, hand, and I, ha, hand, hand and eye coordination and just like uh, getting your forearms and that I uh, see get, get your forearms all hanged up and your hand and eye coordination is good, just good for speeding your uh, your reflexes kind of stuff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. be very rarely seen we've not got one in the old gym have you seen one no? no we had one in the old gym and then I think we had one and I think my dad broke it He's good at it. He's I've been be- listening he's to him. He's, be- he's, he's the best at his art, isn't it? Oh, is he? Aye. Aye, it's just weird. Like, right. Things, so, how have you not got these? Like, there's a few different things. Now, now, now we've got all sorts of different bags now, but we've just not got a speed boss up because it's a. It's a it takes a. If it's just for what? If you've got a big enough gym, it's alright to put it there, but. You could run, use a bigger bag there, which is ah, going to be more productive. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? You need to set a space aside, and if there's no space, it's a fucking bit of a hindrance. But they're, they're good, man. You end up sitting, but as soon as somebody sees it, you just run up and vault, punch it. Ah, if it's hard as you can, but then that's, that's, how, that's how it ends up breaking. That's exactly <laughs> that's how it ends up breaking, man. I've always wanted to be like, see, watch cunts in the pool, they're smashing them, man. I've, I did a cut of punches, like, fuck this, man. I've, loved I've always loved to be able to do it, and I can't. Can, you can't I can do it, date, I can date, no, I've never been able to do it. Have you not? I can date to a certain extent, but no, the way. So yeah. was that never a part of your training? No, like the odd time, my dad would always try to make make me do it like just to just just to concentrate, Aye. just a different thing. Don't get me wrong, I go go to another right level, but some people, like these homeless guys, are a different level to mm, anybody, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is mental. Are you see, like Mayweather, not they're smacking it. Some people, like, could date blindfold. This guy could do it like spinning run with his elbow, like. Oh, right, Some, right. Like well, something you've never seen. Like, is it wild? Just a mad homeless did in LA. Just uh, that's amazing. I'd love to see that. Has your dad still got the video? Did they post it anyway? I uh, know, but I you will have it. But we need to find it and look it out, man. And I'll send it because uh, it's I unbelievable. It. I'd like to see that. Unbelievable. I think we're going to end up getting like 10 or, uh, 10 or 20 dollars just to watch him do it. I will deserve one. Anyway, guys, like, like, right, this is my guy's like, I need all of them. Give me a hell of a for your day if you keep giving uh, me money. Of course, man. Get him a day backflips and shit like that. an extra 50. That's class, but I say that line in that LA, right along that Venice Beach is just like, you've got all the different like, pull-up bars and you've got some and of people just strong as anything. Mm-hmm. Like the boy, the boy Nathaniel follows my dad trains. He's there there and he's wee cocky. He just came back for the Commonwealth Games in, two, this was in 2018 we went there and he's he's up in front of the pull-up bars, strong as anything. You've got the ropes, see the ropes, you, you can climb yourself up and get Aye. to the top. Just on the beach. Right. But they're high as well, anything. Salt course kind of thing. Aye. But then you've got all these pull-up bars and people doing it and he's like, ah, they bother, man. You've got all sorts of different wee birds and that kicking about the beach. He's up on the thing. Then also the pull-ups, man, I just ran and scanted them. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Everything right out. Just hanging. He was just hanging for a pull-up bar. Did Every, they let it hang? Everything out. Aye. I think he had an option. I think he realised how, how he did. He was just sitting there people walking past and he's like, in the <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, man. Scanted so like right semi- it. Oh, I <laughs> Oh, he was gutted. Still with this day slang on with it. Ah, oh, you should have got a fucking photo of that. I wish I did. Wish somebody did. Should have got the mad homie starting up. I wish I did. I thought all the boys. I thought all the boys were saying, I wish I had that in video, but it was just like I didn't even have time to find nah, it. It was just by the moment. Oh man! The time you get the camera out, man, he's got the box. He's got the eyes. He's already dropped down for the music. Uh, but it's because it was a reasonable high. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? He's up there also. That part was man heavy gone for it. The next thing you know, he man scanted them right now. Do we cock it? No, <laughs> <laughs> it's Boxers funny. cock. <laughs> Didn't you have boxers on? It was shorts. Nah, it was funny because nah, we were at the beach. Cock, I mean, in the, oh, man, I boxed all the dick. It was funny, mate. It was funny. What was the biggest thing you noticed being in there? Like, you, as you say, what, for end that doesn't know, Joe Ham, thank you for coming back again. <laughs> but, uh, ex-pro boxer, boxing the Commonwealth Games, Team GB, and you've just recently retired. Great to have you in a part of Puffy, man. But before we take you back to the start, man, I want to just uh, continue on that story there because you say you used to go out to LA and train at Freddie Roach's gym. Mm. 
What was your experience of that? Let me stop you right there, pal. Hate to interrupt, but you need to shut your mouth right now and let the big man get yapping. This is a short message for your sponsors, Ross Harper Solicitors. Are you needing criminal representation in court? Do you feel that you and your lawyer don't have the relationship that you think you need for him or her to do the job that they need to get you off? I've got just the man for you. Nigel Scullion at Ross Harper Solicitors is a true embodiment of what it means to be be a good lawyer. And I'm not just talking about in the courtroom. Nigel seeks to develop a personal relationship with his clients. He wants to keep you at the courtroom. He's not just wanting to fill his pockets. He wants to get you in, get you out, and set you on a path of freedom. Nigel has got his clientele at his heart. But don't get me wrong, in the courtroom, he is a stallion. He will fight tooth and nail to keep you from going up to the big boy house. Or the big girl house. Or the big them house. I've known Nigel a couple of months and I've developed a personal relationship with him. He's very relatable. I've met a good few lawyers in my time. Nigel's young and he's feisty and he's ferocious. But he's a friendly guy. Any support you need outside the courtroom, he will provide it for you. And Nigel's the kind of guy that will offer you the kind of support that doesn't need a legal aid certificate signed after it. He's a great guy and an even better lawyer. He comes for a long line of good lawyers. This man has got criminal defence in his genes. Just think about it. Do you want to go to jail or do you want to go home? And if you've not got a home, Nigel's the kind of man that will help you find the correct support services you need because his work goes far beyond the realms of inside the courtroom. This is a guy that cares about his clients and he sees them as more than clients. He sees them as people. He sees people that have for whatever reason, they've ended up in a maybe a wee dark point in their life. He seeks to get them out of it and keep them out of it. So look no further than Nigel Scullion at Ross Harper Solicitors to support you and your needs and staying out the jail. 0800 11 12 13 is the contact number. If you want to get them online, it's www.rossharper.com. You can direct message him on Instagram at Ross Harper Scotland, TikTok at Ross Harper 61, and you can find him on Facebook at Ross Harper. To some night you skull you up in a short sentence, he's old school with a new energy. Check them out, people, Ross Harper solicitors. But in the meantime, enjoy the podcast. The first year we went, just by chance, like me, it was only me, only freeze, it was only me, my dad, and my dad's other boxer, Stuart Buck. Right. We went there just by chance. We tend to have done training camps in Marbella and stuff before. Okay. And it was just always something. Everybody goes to and does all these training camps in LA. It's like, it's a least lifetime opportunity. And you're just like, you get into Fred the Roach's gym, the wild card, which is very famous. And he's one of the most famous coaches in the world. Mm-hmm. Trains Manny Pacquiao and all different kind of boxers. So we chanced the run, we went over, over to LA just to do a bit of training you're off chance you're, you're getting in you didn't know anybody yeah. so it's just you're, you're walking into one of the hardest gyms in the world in the off chance that you're going to get some spam but you don't know like so this wasn't like, prepared no no like we just went, no you don't, you don't know you anybody the message just turn up right, that's see, how see, that's see, how it see. works over there like it's just as long as if you've got a gum shield and gloves and you're walking to spa anybody will entertain you really so you <laughs> can just walk in but it's <laughs> the street obviously if you so if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, so if you, you, you could just walk off the street and just train in that gym at any point mm-hmm. but the we didn't know at the time. Up the stairs is just like you can walk in, train, and that's where he stands behind the desk and you can meet everybody. There's two rings and hundreds of bags and it's just, people just go just to train in the wild card. Uh-huh. But downstairs is where our actual pro boxers train, all his fighters, mm-hmm. which is locked so you can't even like get in it unless you're invited down. Right, I see. So when we first walked in, we seen Liam Smith, who's now, he's now fighting Chris Eubank again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I boxed in the same combo of games as his brother Callum. We got talking to him, recognised it. So he introduced us to Freddie Roach, talking away brand new. So then through that, he invited us downstairs. And for you know, there was a, a boy, I'm sitting there and you're just thinking, who the fuck am I going to spar? Because you don't know, it could be anybody. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, a boy walks in and he just previously, I think it was like maybe six or six months before, he boxed Carol Frampton for a world title in Belfast. He was right. called Chris Avalos. Right. He was like 25 wins, one loss or two losses or whatever it was. But he was a very, I almost think, fought for world titles and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, what way are you? And I'm like, nine stone. Like, he's really like, you're sparring him. And you're just like, oof. Was that this guy? Uh, yeah, but I was only like, I think I must have only been maybe four and all at the time. And it's just, that's what it is. 
Nah, obviously, you get offered the chance, you don't go say no. So you go in and it's far, and it's one of the ones you just go in first couple, the first first bit. You just go in, you're looking at him, and everybody's watching you, and you've got you've just got to crack on, right? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So cracks on, go out in the first round, go to touch his gloves, and he just scalps me with a right horn. <laughs> <laughs> fucking bastard! I was like, oh, bro, you can either go two ways with something like that. That can either like. Be like, oh fuck that! I don't what, what, what you doing? And you can either hang it. I was like, oh, fucking brilliant, man! Uh, right to town. Ah, uh, because that's that's kind of set the standard. The, right the, to the, town, the man! And I was just trying to try to take his head off with every bomb. And I think he got then. I think he just expected just to come out. But they don't know anything about you. You don't. don't like, I mean, I know him. Only the reason I know him is because I watched from fight Carol Frampton. No, nah, no one. Do you know what I mean? That's no one a person. It's only because you know who they are. Box for a world title and stuff. I was trying to kill him. Funny. And his dad shouting at the side of the ring. And my dad said, and it, it go, gets a- animated. Like, you ever that seen, like, it, in aye. a Mayweather's gym? It's got the doghouse. Aye. People aye. on the side of the ring and all that. It's like, it's wild. Right, so is it like that? Aye, and it's like, there's no, it gets to a point after, like, the first 30 seconds, there's no boxing. It's just a street fight. Right, right so but, it's, but, it's like as close to an actual fight as you can get. But he'd yelled in gloves on, try to kill it, try right. to do each other. What size of gloves is it sparring gloves? 14, aye, 14, aye. Don't get me wrong. So I'm trying to give it to him, man. I'm trying to take his head off. But he kept, like, fixing his gloves and saying his head gear was loose and getting breaks in the spam. so I'm back to the corner and my dad's like stick it on him and the boy Liam Smith's there and he's like he's like every time he rests don't let him rest and I was like ah sound one time in like the third or fourth round man he's stopped the spa to fix his glove he's turned his back on me man I was ran behind him cracked him man did you hey? <laughs> man, was, <laughs> how did he react oh he's down at something to say the ring or shouting at his and all that but did my dad's just laughing and, and, uh, people was did like def- defend yourself all the time uh, true man true well, it, it, it sets need... the precedent when I was, as you say you go for a, the, the touch gloves oh, and he man, I big, just, so. oh, I, he just turned his back on me man I ran behind him and I scalped him <laughs> <laughs> just cause thingy but then after it you're like ah, brilliant spar mate get a photo you know, and all that and then he's like the next day so he's like ah, can we spar again the first day because I kind of go to I, I, I did I go to bed him try to try to get see this so the next day no so this is on the they spar they spar Monday Wednesday Fridays so this must have been on the Monday we arrived Sunday night so right mm. after playing right into the gym right right jet lag and all that so I was Fucking like okay. so when we turn up to the gym on the Wednesday he's already there uh, warming up getting ready I'm like he's going to come for you at the uh, day do you know what I mean but at this point this is where uh, so you, you walk into the gym and in the gym it was very quiet that day but you had Jamie Carragher and stuff the mm-hmm. football player mm-hmm. he was there watching Liam Smith train right so was he air with him or was he just no he just happened just to be he was on watch. holiday with his son yeah, right, and right. he happened to be coming to the gym uh-huh. went over to the gym and he's watching the spar and stuff and same idea just as soon as that bell goes it's just I didn't even give him the opportunity to put my horn out to touch his gloves this time it's just that's it, you just go and then same idea, you meet just famous people, Jamie Carragher sitting there watching you spar. You know How what I mean? How did that feel? It's, I don't even know who he was, but and obviously, but my dad, my dad doesn't, doesn't follow the football whatsoever, so my dad's just like, my dad's walked out of him, obviously, he knows he's for Liverpool, knows he's for the Brit, knows he's for the UK and stuff. So there's me and Stuart, everybody, you know, people, he's at Jamie's just sitting watching the spar and enjoying himself, my dad's right up to him like that, you're a boxer. <laughs> 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 Jamie Carragher's like, no, I, I play football. I played football for Liverpool and that. My dad's like, I don't watch football. <laughs> and it's just one of the ones. I'm, like, I'm sitting there like, oh, for fuck's sake, man. Just that you don't even know if his kid, no, you don't know if he thinks his kid uh, yeah, Maybe he does know. And and I know like, he's but, genuine. Nah, I know who genuine? young, mate. I, and to be fair, he was spot on. Forties took me on and he was brand new as anything. So oh, I just yeah, watched eh? the spot on. I think he likes, I think he likes his boxing. Mm-hmm. And his pals with really, that boy Beefy and obviously there. But that was the first year of the spawn and it was just, mental mm. and that's how then that set us up then we kind of went back every year for four years just mm. all different things second year we'll go we walk in and you end up sparring Scott Quigg who was a world champion right, same right. thing but he was for the UK mm-hmm. looked after us the set. The next year we went Lee Selby world champion for the UK and we him so were they all there were they, were they, were they, were they, did they, are they everybody, trained for Federal or did they no, just no, go to this gym everybody just, just to train? Train? everybody just goes to LA just to train right right it's right. only for like a week or two weeks but people just go there because it's the best sparring in the world because it, right? it's not just Freddie Roach's gym there's loads of different gyms in and out of LA mm-hmm. but everybody from all over the world descends on this gym just we were there it's partly just as a training camp organised people just go hoping that they'll get spotted right I see I see it's, 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 it's a good idea as well plus as well if you want to uh, go out with well, like your own area because it's like the talent levels in about England and Scotland it only gets to a certain level 
Especially yeah. in the, if you're going into sparring gyms, you're not going to be sparring world champions and that, but you, as you say, you go into like Federosi's gym, you've got that opportunity, you, you can fight people you know, and champions. You don't know who two people are. People like, like Boy Nathaniel, the second year, I was, I, see, because I've been four times, hard to remember what right. year was with. But the first year Nathaniel went, Nathaniel's, he's a British and Commonwealth champion now, he'll be, he'll be a world champion, but this was, he hadn't even turned professional yet. Straight over, he ended up sparring the boy called George Kambosis, who was, ah, was a unified world champion. Ah, he, he just, just beat, fought the other night. He just beat Teofimo Lopez, and then he just beat Maxi Hughes. Uh-huh. Didn't he think he beat Maxi Hughes, but before he got a decision. So he was like 18 or 17 and 0 at this point. And Mad Nathaniel was getting nay fights, but don't get me wrong, he's, he's at a higher level. Has a has wars room. And we, so when, when we found when we found that Teofimo Lopez beat, uh, no, when Kambosis boxed Teofimo, we'd already seen him up close by sparring with Nathaniel, do you right, know what I mean? Right. And then the next thing you know, he's a unified, he's, he won, he beat two from Lopez, had four belts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Him, he lost him to Devin Haney, but then he just, he's calling the comeback now and beat Maxi Hughes Aye. last week. But we, he just in the wild card, he just happened to be there, their train at that time. Aye. So did Nathaniel. That's interesting though, because you just see with Nathaniel, he hadn't turned pro, he hadn't had no, many fights at that point. He's, he's thinking like Mace Jim's a black hat and all right, the pros, nah. you spar <laughs> him, you spar him, you stay away from him. I see if you've got gloves. So and you could literally go in there and fight any. You could fight a world champion. You could fight. You wouldn't even know. Really? Nobody yeah. they would even say. Like a lot of people don't get me wrong. It's boxing's a small thing, so you know who certain people are. Aye, but if you're gonna know, I think it was like the second or third year. The boy Davy came with us. Boy Davy Kelly. He just recently did pro with my dad, but he's been about it for years as well. And uh, he's getting spawned these mad Filipinos and Mexicans, and they're all undefeated. And oh, mad like, killers. Aye, they're all just machines, man. <laughs> Mad Davies, sweets, pale as anything for drum chapel, man. Just gone ahead, <laughs> gone ahead, just gone ahead of people, man. But that's yeah, what it is, and it's brilliant. Man. So you're looking back now, it's probably that you'll uh, not get a better experience in it. It's oh, unbelievable. 100%. What did you take yeah. away from that in terms of like, uh, for a boxing standpoint? Just, what was the biggest lesson you learned? Just the way, the way they treat sparring, everything's just so. Every every spy, I've just got to have like a. It's not so, it's so much an attitude, like. Everything's you've got to like hurt, hurt, want to hurt people. Like mm. usually in a spa, you mess a bit, but earlier you don't really get as much with it. Whereas the way they train, it's like a fight, mm-hmm. and then that gears you up in the hardest rounds. If you're sparring six, eight rounds at some pace, when you get into a fight, you've already experienced it. Aye. Whereas if you're sparring with the same people over and over again, you kind of go through the motions. Aye, you know aye, what I mean? And you you, you, get, you spar the same people, you end up just doing the same thing, and you go overconfidence, and uh-huh. then by the time you do get into a hard fight. Uh, it's not done you any good because you've, mm-hmm. you've not experienced it. Mm-hmm. So we went over there, obviously, you're only four and all, but it was brilliant, man. Just thinking then went back four years on the run, it was unbelievable. And every time we went, I say Fred the Roach, and we end up meeting all the different guys from his gym, as their coaches and that, and they were always brand new, and every year we went, still following on Instagram, and they always still wishes all the best and all that stuff. So then, so that was that. So we started that. So in 2019, Freddie Roach was training a boy called Ivan Branchik and he was fighting Josh Taylor for his world, for the world title in the Hydro. Right. So this is 2019. So Josh is fighting Branchik. So Freddie Roach is training the rushing dude. We are backstage in the Hydro because one of my dad's fighters was on and Freddie Roach walked past and, and noticed us. Oh, did he? Uh, I sat and chatting away. Started talking to him, do you know what I mean? We, as it says, we got my, took him in a Celtic tap, his name, not on it, one of the <laughs> Did he like it? Ah, he's kicking about the gym with a Celtic tap on, man, with his name. We had Freddie Roach, I can't, I can't remember what number we got him, but we had Freddie Roach, no, Freddie Roach won it, wasn't he? Ah, he's got the one. He's kicking, about the, he's kicking about the gym, taking people on the pad with a Celtic tap on. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite funny, but, and we bought it in the airport, flying out. Got oh, it in the air, yeah, took it out of him. It's quite funny. Ah, that's class, man. <laughs> They've been buzzing with that as well. Hope is he still going it? Don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm guess so. but I can imagine here the amount of he stuff people must take him. Ah, he made so much. Clinch it on the boxers, not I mean. Clinch just, it will just go in and just game shit because obviously he's, he's just as famous as any boxer. It's just if if so more famous than most boxers, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. by the way he is because the amount of fighters he's trained with Pacquiao and stuff. But he's gym and it's just a brilliant place, and you think everybody in all the gyms, no matter what they are, they're all very like welcoming. Everybody's ah, up there. All the Americans, there. they're all up. They're all fist bump me. Everybody doesn't matter who you're, and that's that's good. A lot of people, a lot of gyms, you go into people and they're up, they're in arse. Yeah, they do want to, want to talk to you and you want to do things. And then so one of the years we we went, uh, we were training with Lee Selby, and he wanted to spar me and the fan you again. So we went, and he was like, "We're gonna go to a different gym. It's called Maywood." And I mean, when I say we were in the hood 
we were in the hood. Right. Aye, like Fred Rose, Nelly. Fred Rose, she gyms in Hollywood. Right. So like you're a five minute walk for like the, the stars and all that mm, kind of mm. stuff. This gym was no far away from Compton. <laughs> like it? I looked legit. Fuck. And it was they were all the nicest people in the world. Were they? Aye. aye. All like all like oh, they're all like Mexicans and hanging all Latina and they were all they could all go for it. There was one of this gym had produced so many world champions and it was just a just a wee hut. Who had fought out of this gym? Anybody oh, you could like, remember? Yeah, like? Edinburgh, all, all like different Mexican fighters, Oscar, so many people, all different world champions, and then they were just all sitting and we get took to this gym in this, this hood, man. I remember because we went for that gym to Compton. Uh-huh. We wanted, just wanted to see Compton. Uh, they don't tell you to stay away from there. Well, here's who's these white guys we're going to know <laughs> I, we're, we're driving through Compton and then we're like you're just thinking to yourself what the fuck yeah, everybody it was actually spot on you know what is I mean? that eh? we were just during the day but going up mate ah uh, no definitely <laughs> we, get out, we, we get out we're about, yeah, so we get out we're driving we went to McDonald's and that in we, Compton we've, we've hired we hired we, every year we went we had this big like one of the big escalated big Jeeps had like seven people, big black king. Right. <laughs> so I went up getting done in a drive by. So, <laughs> big man. so in the fan you know, we were like, we want to get 40s beside there's a sign that says, Welcome to Compton. Mm-hmm. We're all out getting 40s. And I'm like, oh, man, we're not getting robbed. But uh, <laughs> we went we went to Compton on the way back and it was, it was good just to see what it. What was it like to see it? Did it look as bad just as literally A street, a couple of streets where most of the shops all boarded up. Oh really? Aye, does it Literally. look like you can like fucking quite poverty in? Can I? I can imagine at night time. Like I can imagine at night time that would be. You could, I think it would obviously have been worse years and years ago. Aye. But I can still imagine there would be some shit going. Ah, because if I wouldn't like to be driving about it's there. It's one of the places if you're cutting through there and they don't know you, <laughs> especially if you're white and like driving a big jeep like <laughs> here, you you mean, you're a couple of tourists, couple of tourists from Scotland, man. Next thing you know, I who are these mad guys talking in this we, bad we, accent? We're we boxers, are you? I ain't bother. Give you more. <laughs> but in the luckily, bit. luckily we never had anything like that. But it was, um, it was good. Then that says the last year we went, go through the airport. And end up bumping into Greg Kentful, Victor for still game. Met him in London, Heathrow. And I just like followed on Twitter and stuff. So I got talking to him and then I was like, oh, where he's off to? And they're like, oh, we're going to LA. My dad's walked past and he's like, you want to come to the gym? And I was like, what? He he's, loves like, he's like, we're all, we're all professional boxers. We're all going to the wild card to train. And that, Greg Kempf was like, I would love to come, no bother. But then it's one of the, he's like, I'll send you a message. You're like, no bother, mate. Ah, uh, sorry, mate. So get to, get to LA, check in, do all the the next morning. Get a message for Greg Kempf. Well, what's the address for the gym, mate? So you wanted to come? You're like, you're like, shit, you're not. And then, sure enough, a couple of years later, swaggers into Fred the Rooks' gym and watches Ross Bar, him and his boy. I do, huh? I think he liked it over there because obviously, nobody's watching still game in, in, nah, <laughs> in, so in Hollywood. So he's him. just kind of, he can just do what he wants today. And rather than, I can imagine, if he goes to a gym in Glasgow, everybody, say, everybody's going back in 40s. And he came and watched his Ross Bar, stayed for the whole day. Chilled out, really, really nice guy. Sat and watched all the spam. Sat and spoke to my dad. Watched his all. Got footage with his all. Then hanged on. Class. Decent. Did they know get in for a few rounds? No. Nah, I don't think. Is your dad trying to coax him into it? No. Nah, I don't think. I don't. Come in and get your gun punched. Yeah, he, he didn't. He didn't want any of that smoke, man. <laughs> he was just. He, he was just chilling, man. I would have been heavy humbling to get battled in front of your wee boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> his wee boy, man. His wee boy's about eighteen foot. Is he? <laughs> He's huge. Wait, is he? Well, was he? I don't know, back then. I'm guessing he must have been like eighteen or nineteen. I'm guessing. Oh, he was a no, no. It's wee boy, but he was a big man. But the two of them just sat and just watched this barn. But there's no very you can't just you, if you didn't know you can't just walk into that gym and watch this barn because it's downstairs. Right. So like, cause my dad, my dad says to hey, 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 if Red Roach, this is obviously one of your mates. He's an actor and stuff, and he's like not a problem. They come in and watch get first access to all different barn class. Really, eh? <laughs> that class, man. Is it, see, what are they like with cameras and shit? Are you, are you no, I have no chance. Even in old gym or any gym. There's no video. Is there no now? No. What if you wanted to video yourself? Nah. Nah, how no? Because you know, no video, you wouldn't video people. Listen, listen, don't get me wrong. My dad, if he would be when he wouldn't do it, but like, I would, we would never, we just always had that thing where we don't video spam. Really? Oh, I think we used to do, we used to do when we were amateurs and stuff, but when we have like, even if you go into a pro and somebody's got a phone, you know, like, don't get me wrong, somebody can take the odd pictures, oh, yeah. but if we saw, if we were in a somebody's gym and somebody came to your gym and they're standing with our phone, like, no chance. Aye, no Make chance. sure you're no video. But that's the same 
that's a, just a gym rule. That, oh, that's so is that a that's, general rule? That's kind of like in most gyms, they, they wouldn't want just anybody to sparring, button. but obviously if you want to hit the bag and like... Aye, hit, hit, the, hit the bags and pads and all that. Aye, aye, just the sparring. Just the sparring, aye. You wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't watch... Don't get me wrong, everybody takes videos of hitting the pads and bags. That's not a thing, but watching videos sparring, it's just like an unwritten, unwritten rule. Is it? I never knew Unless that. it's like your own gym and you're sparring too, like... If I if Nathaniel was sparring Reagan or two of my dad's boxers, he would video it because the two of them for the same stable. Right, 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 right. So mm, do you know so what I mean? But it's not as if they're going to be facing each it's other. It's not as if you're going to be facing each other. It's not as if somebody's going to be going away and showing it to somebody else because you aye. can trust the people in your gym. But aye. it's it's like a it's like a world of world to be fair. Is but it? in America, aye. even in all these TV shows and all that, they don't film the spar. They right. all say that phones away. There's no, even Mayweather's gym and everybody. The first thing when they when the spar's about to start, everybody's the same. Phones away, which is a great thing because I think what I did match spawn clips. I couldn't get any of the for any reason. Well, you did see, how, you did see them. Aye, that's how you always hear like, I so and so get get dropped in spawn, they get knocked in spawn. They're like, see, right, is that a so, so, it's all gym stories, you know what I mean? But what happens in a gym? A gym, gym's not a fight. Right. Anybody can win. Nobody can win in a spa. Mm. You can punch fuck it, everybody and knock ten people out in spawn, but you don't get in for it. That's the thing. That's what they say. We a lot. You get a lot of fighters. I think Tyrone Woodley was a prime example. Uh, he used to fight in the UFC. If you don't know who he is. But uh, you would get fighters like they'd go in and they'd spar, they'd leather every cunt in the gym, they'd be fucking dynamite as soon as they go into the arena and they, like, in front of a crowd, Aye. they flap, they're just a different fighter Aye. because they, they've got all the lights and all that shit on them. Two different sports, it's two different things, you know, sorry, Dan, it's what it says, so you can leave it on the gym, mm-hmm. which is a, it's a thing, it can happen because it is a nervous thing, but people would just put sparring clips and all that. We've done it as amateurs and stuff, but. Like you get people put it on, it's like people think liberties and all that. Like, uh, it's not going to get you any. No, is it fuck, you, man? you get people get in with your cameras hidden in their jumpers and all that. You can just tell like, the way they're videoing would it. They can't try and do that? Guessing so, aye. They wouldn't. Oh, right, you just years. say that. Aye, but that's, for some footage. Aye, because people, because if you whip out a phone, Somebody's, right, tell, right. somebody's telling you to put it away. Ah, uh, right, I see, I see. And that's and that's just a right thing to do, you know. Ah, of course, of course, man. Can't be giving away the secrets, man. Aye, especially if some kids are getting into fucking massacre or something, can't you? I mean, especially getting into a big fight, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the difference man. between somebody knowing your tactics and somebody know. That's it. That's it. It, it gives them an advantage that they shouldn't have. Right, definitely. Well, I'm talking about. <laughs> but gives an insight into how your life began, man. How you found yourself finding your way into boxing, man. Because we've heard a, f- a few stories about well, you've been kind of probably it. Your height or your most active man, but let us let us know the real duo. Is. Where did you come from? Where did you start? So, are you sick of that decrepit old dust collecting, beetle crushing, disgusting dirt dump you call a carpet? Ugh. Does your flooring look like a sumo wrestler's been doing the Gangnam style? No filling knees, poor holes. Are you scunnered with the scutting? Does your floorboards need a jacket? Then I've got just the thing for you. HFM flooring are the grand masters at caressing the underside of your soles with the finest, most plushes fabrics ever to grace the market. They fit carpets so soft, you'll soak into it like Ewan McGregor and that scene for trains button. They also do laminate flooring that will restore the style back beneath your feet. Boosh! They also provide LVT and vinyl flooring, which is waterproof, slip resistant and suitable for use with underfloor heating. And if you're somebody that likes to kick back in the garden, but you're allergic to cutting grass, are you blame the hay fever? HFM flooring also installs premium artificial grass, which is easily installed, fade resistant UV protected, has inbuilt drainage to flush out any water, and is pet friendly. All measures and estimates are free. That's right, free. And if you use promo code 50, you'll get 5% off. HFM Flooring is located at Unit 5, 219 Govan Road, Glasgow. G512 HJ. You can contact them directly by telephone on 0141 239 9123. Or you can check out their website www.hfm carpets and flooring co.uk or you can message them directly via social media on either Facebook or Instagram at HFM Carpet Flooring. HFM will fit the flooring that your feet will be adoring. We grew up in the Gobbles, been there all my life, loved it, still there. 
just in the nice part now in Oatlands. I I said the gobbles is like, fuck. Gobble, <laughs> not one tenement to be sli- seen. Slip the Dubai of Glasgow now. So <laughs> everyone's, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's all nice. No, but, uh, like desert. We, uh, we <laughs> grew up there. Uh, so my dad boxed. He just he had like sixteen or seventeen amateur fights. He just didn't like need the boxed in the family before that. Right. He just went to a boxing gym and just loved to have a scrap. Right, I see. And get into, went to a boxing gym, he went to the one and then four and out. I was a wee chubby guy, like seven, eight year old, but I always done the pads with my dad. Like for years, was always, I could always punch and I could always do hangy. Then got to about eight or nine, I started, I was chubby, man, I was fat as then. And they got there like 10 and then basically my dad made the decision that I was going to be a boxer. Right, I so see. He, How did you feel about this decision <laughs> at the time? <laughs> I didn't have one. <laughs> really the gym. I, I couldn't play football, I couldn't run, man. I was a wee chubby goalkeeper, man, just getting volleying shots <laughs> in his man. <laughs> so <laughs> I wasn't I was really like that, nah, couldn't run. Useless. So my dad went to, went to a big fun as a gym, I started thinking it was called Deniston. Uh, Deniston, when it happened to the gym, it happened to be in Deniston. Oh, <laughs> <funny that. laughs> so Deniston ABC, so started, started there, into this old church thing, man. Just hunters are just all wee guys. You walk in, everybody's just growling at you. You've just got to go on with it. Nah, you know, you just, so you're in, you're doing the thing, people taking on the pads, you're hitting the bags, and then I was just a bit weird and I really like it, you know what I mean? Because I was a wee chubby guy and you don't feel the same. You're not as fast as you're not as skinny as other people, and blah, blah, blah. You're going into the spa and the first pair of spars, man, people are part and you're like, ah, fuck this, nah, man. I know, I'm a fucking wee guy, I'm getting punched nah, about I, I, I didn't really like it for the first while, but. To be fair, I stuck at it. Then had my first fight. Going, I had my first exhibition. Sorry, I must have been like maybe I was ten. Don't think you could fight till you were eleven. So I must have had my first fight at eleven. And else, vice versa. Maybe it was nine. I had my. It was one of the two. So we had an exhibition mm-hmm. in the Smiths Hotel in Kirk and Tulloch. Get by these big mad black shorts on. Got a vest on. It's too big for his man. My fucking wee fat tits. I've put them at the side of the vest and all that. <laughs> the vest is all taped because it's that big for his. I'm doing an exhibition and it was good just to get named the ones. So it was a boy versus another boy for the club. Named the wins. The two years win, you get a trophy and all that. So done that. Was it named the wins? What do you mean named the wins? You're only we were only ten year old, so you're just like a spar. Oh, it's so like a spar on a show just to get you. So like, there's no like, right. He won, you lost. No, you no. It's just it's just to get his experience for the when he's when he's do go right. to do it. Just, just, just to kind of fighting in front of. Sorry, we were doing all the spar. Ah, but this time you're doing it in front of people having a drink. Ah, right, so the first see, fight on and the Smith Hotel and the cock and talk and everybody's clapping and all that. Two years get a trophy, you're fucking buzzing. Mm-hmm. We don't any. It wasn't until a year later then we had the first fight. First fight, I was like 52 kilogram. Bear in mind, this must have been, I was, I'm sure it was either 10 or 11, but this must have been 52 kilos. Bear in mind, my last fight, when I was 31, I was 55 kilos. That's fucking mental. Do you know what I mean? So, in fucking how many years? 15 so, years or so, 52 kilos, man, but turn up to the, this, this ring, <laughs> box this big, the boy must have been about eight fit. I was a wee chubby guy, man, and he's, battled my cooking content in your first fight I was game but one thing I was missing the most skillful but I was game as then mm-hmm. I would go ahead with anybody and that was just just going ahead man just running forward windmilling every time I was windmilling I was getting heat jabbed at me because the guy was just massive <laughs> I just using his uh, fucking but with things. that I go beat first fight go beat and then I thought to myself it was a buzz you know what I mean but so so you actually just enjoyed the fighting aspect I it? just hang so that what I'd done from that my dad was like you can't just go and get beat or anything you, you can hang so from that I lost like I lost like a stone a bit just fell off because it was just, just chub, chubby wee guy do you uh, know what I mean next fat. thing you know I had my I had the next fight was in Glen Rothes 40, 44 kilogram this time one what a buzz no oh, really I uh, actually, actually experienced winning this buzz. time then you win again, then you win again, and for you know, you're just kind of going through the amateur stages, a wee boys, you're kind of going through. Then for you know, you go into the Scottish Championships, the Western District Championships, you win them, and you're like, that's fucking brilliant, man. <laughs> fucking phone and getting hundreds of money off people, not because you get winning. Oh, My yeah, granny's so you get, not. Did that. you get paid for it at that point? No, or? just family members. Oh, every you just, win. just kind of like, hey, and if, if I won, my dad would always buy you know, your new, get up, get up to the Scottish Championships. I always like to have the best of kits on. Yeah. My dad would always have to go through, buy your new kits, and buy you new things if you win you get you used to get my dad would buy his sannies or a trackie or oh, just right. just give you so incentive you, you know what I mean and my granny they give you money and all that shit so it was fucking brilliant so kind of went through and that was didn't really take it seriously that was just 
your ho- a ho- like a hobby's a wee guy. Do you know what I mean? People went to football training. I yeah. went boxing. Uh-huh. People back then you probably never thought I would do what I'd, what I've done now or going on to as much. People just knew me a wee boxer. But that, how far can you go with? It, do you know what I mean? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't until I was like fifteen or sixteen, and then boxing for Scotland and stuff, and then you just kind of had first fight. Instead, I got to stay in standard grades in school. I ended up going to the European Championships in Italy, fighting out in the beach in Sardinia at night time. Unbelievable! Like what an experience. Thought of going out fighting the Scottish Championships, British Champ. You win all the aim for all the years, and you just think I'm fucking bro. I'm dynamite. This was like your first eye opening test to go to experience with people at your own age but the elite of the elite Aye. so we went to the European Union Championships and I was in Sardinia and Italy got through against Turkey as what it is God, I'm going to smash this my dad's on the phone he was obviously he was just always a coach but you've got Scotland coaches and all different things so we we a couple of guys earlier I got through against Turkey man oh I got leathered <laughs> uh, yeah, was I, that your first kind of experience at uh, an international competition aye in the first experience it was such an eye opener was it how aye. so because I was a wee white as anything reasonable I was still quite chubby but no no as chubby as what I was but I still had a wee bit of chubby wee baldy chubby white person <laughs> fighting this absolute machine of a, a Turkish guy with a heavy chest <laughs> biceps and triceps <laughs> I was across the ring for him like what the fuck he's no 14 was <laughs> <laughs> he meant to be 14 they can't well, he, he was but he just just Four, 14 mile test a week bro <laughs> the oh first round got it man I try to land a few jazz few hangies man everybody just bouncing off him man next thing you know he just r- ragdolling me about the ring don't get me wrong he's using a punch bag ah, he beat me on points I still always go ahead never, never give up hanging like that. but I beat me on points but it kind of gave me an eye opener as if to say if you, at this level you've kind of got to you can get away with it in Scotland but that doesn't mean anything it's it's this yeah, you need to step up so he comes back again in the story doing the line so as I caught Mehmet Topcan he was just an absolute machine but he was in a kind of eye opener so this must have been this is either 2006 2007 what age were you back then? I must have only been 15 so you're 15 so what we you see like, your life outside of that because 15 like, like fair. you started when you were 7 I was 50 kilogram then uh, so, and then until you were 15 what was your life outside of boxing like were you kicking about or you hanging about with the troops or that no, or I was up, just I did that. disciplined I grew up in, in the gobbles I was always hanging about the schemes that, but I'd, I'd never drank right so I was parent in case your know, dad do this because <laughs> he was a coach you know what I mean so everybody can I go can... like other people go in for the gym and then the coach is in the, in the house. Oh, he doesn't know what's happening. And every time I was going to hear him, I, mean, I was like, cause there was only 15 years between me and my dad, you know what I mean? Aye. So he was still boxing, training at the same time that I was. Mm-hmm. So I was going to like him, like, for, or before I was going out, or before I was going anywhere, and he but like, ah, mum will spar in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and, and our spare room, we used to stay in the high flats in the goggles. This must have, I must have been about 13 or 14. I mean, my dad used to go for it, man. But an actual spa. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, he's no gone fucking for it. Well, does, he obviously doesn't, but he's always trying to take me with body shots. Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to put you away. But, I, but he used to always just spar us, man. Funny. Did he, eh? Aye, ah, he's brilliant. Did, 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 did it never feel weird at any point? Did you know that, like, see, like, <laughs> speaking to your pals, did they name like, ah, right, you I wish it was your dad, oh, he's not working out, I wish you, wait, I've got to take you to the fit one, I don't know what you're doing, I'm going to hate me spar my dad six rounds, <laughs> <laughs> in the spare room, but it was fucking brilliant, you know what I mean? So then, but when I say, so he used to always, when we were training at the same time and stuff, so he used to always make me, as I said, I hated running, couldn't run to save myself, we chubby guys, so he used to always take me out running, running the glass of green and all that kind of stuff, no, but if you can't keep up, you're getting left. <laughs> so like, we would be on the other side of the guys again. I wait the guys again for up it. She's not in the back and to keep up, man. They just run away. And they just run away and leave you. I know. I would just have to just get myself him. Don't get me wrong. Send the gobbles. No, if you're like, you know, whatever it is. Aye. But I would have to get yourself him. And I was like, oh, did that ever happen? Oh, plenty of times. I know. I would walk him pure raging, man. Just run away. I know. But I'm no fucking. I'm walking. I'm not running him, man. Pure raging. <laughs> My mic got obviously get him and my dad's like, oh, where's Joseph, man? My dad's like, I've left the fat cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just tracking about the guys are green. But then years later, that's what made me such a good runner and so competitive at running. Right. I became a machine at running. So that kind of just instilled something positive in Something you? in my mindset. Now and every time me and my dad used to go running, he went on a bike. <laughs> oh, did he? <laughs> I <Aye>, shite man. <laughs> <laughs> didn't want, he didn't want any didn't want the smoke. He didn't want that smoke. Yeah, but don't get me wrong, my dad's... So what is my dad now? He must be 48. Uh, and he's still out. He runs every morning. 
does he? Is he's knees no knackered? Up, up, up. Kafkin, Gleza Green, no matter whatever, him and, him and, him and his staffy just looking for fights. <laughs> really? But the staffy are him looking for fights? Both. Them. <laughs> anybody? Anybody? Either Some just poor dog walker get him and, his, him and his mate have ran for years every morning. He's out, f- out six in the morning no matter what. Running three or four miles every, every single day. Sake, as fit as anything. Training. So we train in the gym. Say we were in the gym at 12 o'clock. He's in at 11. Oh, is he? Training himself. Right, we're yeah. in the gym at one. He's in at 20. He's in. He's always, he's right, always so fit. So he's still physically active? Always, aye. He's heavy gone for it all the time. I did see no drink, no? Never. With Never. nannies have, I think that's why I've known. Do you know yeah, what I mean? And then, so it's not as if you've always been around it. But then even though, I, even though I've still got the same... Even though I've grew up in the Gobbles, I went to school in Kings Park. So all, all my mates have still got, I've still got the same group of pals as which I had back then, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. And uh, like we grew up there, but everybody for the Gobbles have always backed us, uh, which is something you don't usually see. Uh, somebody first know, team. Fun, usually man? somebody somebody doing well, like, he's a prick. He's uh, a, I get all the people for the scheme, no matter what. They always they've always backed us. I've never had any trouble. I've never been in street fights. Not never had nothing. They Not never get all, pro. No. Usually people you think oh you get pressured into drinking or pressured into nothing. Everybody's always in spot on, and then. We'll talk about like getting into the common of games and it's fighting in your home city all the years down the line. When I'm picking back then, that's not in my mindset. Do you know what I mean? Like when I'm only like 14, 15, that's 10 years away. Mm. That's no, you don't think that. You're Was just thinking here your and there. Vision, though? No, like. You, Are you just taking it a fight at a time? A fight at a time. You're just right. kind of going through the thing because you've got to win to get to box for Scotland. You've got to win the Scottish Championships every year. Mm. So you can't have a, any lapse. You know what I mean? Right. And they come across every March. Mm-hmm. So you fight on the march and then that's what sets you up on the international tournaments for the rest of the year. Right. And it happens again and again and again. So I won 10 Scottish titles. I won it every year I entered it. Oh, did you? Right? Oh, definitely. Right. I won it f- schoolboy, youth, schoolboy, junior, then youth. And then I, I, I can't remember. I've won, I won five straight Scottish senior titles in a row, which is quite hard today. Mm-hmm. And that's what kind of got me in a position to... To get me where I was, you know what I mean? Ah, uh, of course, of course. So take me back to when you were in Sardinia. You suffered that loss to that Turkish <laughs> guy. I can't. Even, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. M- Mehmet Topkan. Mehmet Topkan. Right. I was going to say something else. I was right. like, I'll end up fucking right. saying something and Dish- sound like a fucking racist <laughs> or something, man. <laughs> but so where did it go for there? So like, they- did you get go back into the gym with us, right? Back to my back to my, my dad. Like fuck me, man. Just get leveled. And he's like, ah, it's, you've got it today. So you go for that. So I'm, I'm sure I was 15. So then. You go, so I'm, I'm not a youth yet, I'm still a, still a junior, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it's right. hanging, so then, I that was right, because 16 to 18 is youth, right. then anything over 18, that's you, mm-hmm. 18 to 35. Mm-hmm. So I go from there, and then, what did I do? That was 2007. Then I go into the Western, the Western District Championship stuff, and then the next year that's you into youth level. But when you're in a youth level, you can still enter senior competitions in Scotland, like the Western Districts and stuff. Right. So when I was 17 all kind of changed you had the it was a weird structure of boxing in Scotland it was like different coaches took you so we didn't have like a national coach at the time right then all, like all gets announced different people come in a guy called Richard Thomas comes in he was spot on he actually passed away he was some, he was some, some guy he kind of structured it in a different way he's more like a business sense the, the boxing every age group right. they all get a budget which had never been happened but it was probably the best thing that's ever happened because no. now that's what's now got the structure today and it's all came from like his when way he started it. so what was it like before what? mental mate oh, was just, it, just, I, it was just a chaos it wasn't run very good so <laughs> this guy so they've got all these people doing the gyms you go to Scotland training the Scotland training was like every Sunday in a different gym throughout the west of Scotland mm. Motherwell whatever so like people from Edinburgh Glasgow everybody comes and the best goes to the, the competitions you got the best of sparring so that's what you, you, you that's what makes it right. so Everybody's in all these gyms. So one Sunday we all go to a gym called Newt Hill. Or different coaches or different boxers, or other places. So you've got this guy for Liverpool comes up, guy called Kem Smith. We're an Everton training tap on. Nobody's ever heard of this guy, Scouser. And he's just like that to every single person. Coaches, boxers, he's like, user or shite. <laughs> 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 and looking back now, like, it sounds fucked. Aye. But it was right. So it was. The thing with behind him just saying cunts were shite. Because he turned up and said everybody was he shite. He had a thing, is every bo- everybody in Scotland fought the same. You always used to f- watch Braveheart and just think he's always walk forward. Nice. And it made sense. Uh-huh. See, but nobody ever thought about it. Do you know what I mean? Right, I so, like, we just used to turn up to these training camps and everybody would just spar each other. I just start and, fucking weaning that, each other. That's, that's how it went. And then by the time you go to a fight, you're just fucked. So, this, he comes in, just basically says, you're all shite. 
and everybody's like, ah, all right, kill me. Then it, but it upset, on, mate. <laughs> upset a lot of people. Uh, like a lot of people like for all different things but like boxers and such coaches but, it, are, but it's coaches because all these coaches are old school uh, 15 so rounds on, their ways. 15 rounds on the bags 10 mile runs 15 fucking rounds span he's like ah, nah he's like you just need to learn how to box you just need to learn how to do computer and it was, it was, it was computer scoring so it's you get a point to land on a certain punch of the glove if you land with a weight part of the knuckle that registers as a point so we would just be like oh, go ahead and country would just Box the heat off us and Aye. you get beat stupid, and it happened to everybody at every level. Don't get me wrong, you had the odd one coming through all different years that would do really well and going, but for the most part, it was the kind of the same. Mm-hmm. It wasn't going anywhere. He came in and broke everything down, like mental. So, a lot of the coaches didn't take it, but my dad became a coach with him, became his mate, and learnt from him so much. So, that he took my dad and all the Scotland trips with him, yeah. along with another few guys. So like that's where well, you've got like me coming through, Boy Aston Brown, Josh Taylor, um, Lewis Benson. You had a whole host of different fighters all coming through at the same time now, mm-hmm. and it all got broke down. And he used to break everything down, and he just made us box the way he wanted to box. There right. was no sparring. We get made to stone in front of a mirror. No sparring. He made us stone in front. Of, he put he put two bits of tape on the ground like in a cross, and made us. Work on our footwork for hours at a time. Really, aye. And we were like, everybody's like, this is so shit. People were not really lying on back then. It was like, you didn't have so much the social media, like Facebook and Twitter and everybody. This is back in 2008 or something. Mm-hmm. And everybody used to have all these boxing forms. And cunts used to just come on with fake names and just slaughter them. Didn't know, them like doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> this cunt's a prick, man. He's just fucking <laughs> making everything. It's just like boxers or coaches. Mixed aye, up. Yeah, everybody, because they, I was thinking, but then. It worked massively because it took a year. Then between the 2008 and that 2008 was like the learning year. You were still boxed on all the fights. He came. He used to stay in a boat in Kirk and Turk and then he had a, a, wee, a wee van. He had a mattress in the back of it and he just toured about. Going out, different, just going out of different gyms just telling people they were shite. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking hero. Then meet you on a Sunday and he would make you do all your footwork, all your things. And then, true enough, Become, became, you, you learnt his style. Took a year to implement it. Then the year between 2009 and 2010, I was a different animal. Really? Different for, the, for the better? For all the better. Totally transformed I you? Just transformed me. Everything from the, for boxing to boxing on the back foot, for counter punching to punching hard to believing in yourself. That was mm. the biggest part. What did he do? Was that just like the kind of the thing that helped you believe he yourself? Or did he implement he, he, implement, he just pl- implemented that much confidence in you. Like, if you were to do something on the pads, you'd be like, that shit and you'd be like that is shit because it, before you would they would say that to you mm-hmm. you would just do the same thing and uh, make the same mistakes and it, ma- it made sense mm-hmm. and it changed he changed the, he changed the dynamic of, of a lot of us a lot of us a lot of us owe my, owe my lot it's been, yeah. and my dad even admit to this day he's the one thing you learnt learnt everything off really aye unbelievable so did, did people kind of fall off the wagon oh window? so many did cunts go oh fuck this cunt doesn't him. know what he's talking aye, about he just turned up to cunts gyms in a van and just with an Everton strip and just telling them they were shit. <laughs> but the best thing the best thing that ever happened to me was him coming into that thing just in terms of and in that year of 2009 I had like 37 fights I won 5 gold medals all over the world boxed won like 3 or 4 silver medals as well boxed at the highest level so I'd won like two, won a tournament in Croatia, won a tournament in Finland, all gold medals, won the Scottish Championships, won a couple, of, won, won a duel against France, won another one. So I'd went like 15 or 16 fights undefeated, mm-hmm. went down to the British Championships in Liverpool, where well, was his home city, do you know what I mean? So yeah. he's down there, beat the English champion, then beat the Welsh champion. So I was a British champion at a youth, so I was, I was like, fuck me, I'm fucking flying. Mm-hmm. So I went to a tournament in Germany, box <laughs> Flying like I, I was like I'm on I was like I'm just a machine by this we're just winning gold medal after gold medal, box a uh, good sitting so we're all sitting in Germany so you've got me as you say Josh Taylor and stuff we're all sitting there with my wee boys all go over so we're all, the night before they draw you're sitting in a big hole and the draw the draw comes out of who you're gonna get draw against quarter final same things mm-hmm. so my dad's sitting there my dad Kev Smith we're all there and he's sitting there and the draw comes out I'm sitting like that. Joham, at this point I'm 54 kilogram. I'm up, Joham. Boom, red corner, boom, draw against 
Mem Top Can for Turkey. Fuck <laughs> off, man. <laughs> I'm fucking, like that. How long ago after it was you, you bet you? Such free year. So it was three year. Three year, but three year makes a, a massive that. difference. So it goes, uh, but three years that is like I'm a different, a, a different animal, different mm-hmm. everything. I'm only I'm four kilos heavier, but I'm just a different mm-hmm. everything. Do you know what I mean? So threw against him, man. I'm like, ah, oh for fuck's sake, man. I'm going to get my cunt punched again. <laughs> but at this point. It's a different thing. I've got my dad in it. My dad's in the corner. It's a different thing. So we go over. First fight, man. Right again against him. He just walked towards me, man. Just seen me and just thought, I'm going to absolutely smash this kind of again. Came out, I remember, I think he just came out and he just opened up on me. And I was against the ropes. And I just remember step. But at this point, I'm like, I'm confident myself. Years right. before, I would, you would panic and fluster. Didn't affect me. Touched him, step back, backhand. And his legs buckle. And he shot himself. Like for the rest of the fight, he didn't throw punches. Really? Eh? It was it was the weirdest thing in the world, and I, I won the fight like four one in points because since since that land person, it didn't want to do anything, mm. and it was the, it was the weirdest. Do you think it was about that? I just think it, it knew in that first punch that you were a different fighter. Do you think? I don't know. It was just it was. I think I just caught him a good shot. You just took the wind. And I, I and it, I don't get expected, but I won I won the fight, and that was I was like. It's just weird, like how things come run about the circles. Aye. But that boy's always one that always come back. And I was like, fucking brilliant. So I beat him, then I beat somebody else, then I beat a very good Hungarian boy who, who was winning as well, and this was the semi finals. I beat him, and the other side of the draw was this Russian, we smaller guy, and I was like, ah, I was, I, my, by this point, I think I'd went like 19 fights undefeated. I was flying. I was like, I'm gonna absolutely smash this fucking cunt in. And into the ring the next day, and the next day for the final, oh my god, he's still to this day. In the top f- three or four people, for f- top f- between the top five boxers I've ever been in, with he's one of them. He smashed my cunning. <laughs> Did he? Oh, he <laughs> brought me. Lesson. He brought me down to what I needed t- to be. I don't know what. I just assumed that I would walk through him. I'd be too big for him. So and jank, your head was kind of get you're getting ahead of yourself. But, but, so but just the way, confidence was just reaching but, to a point where you're. But in a way, you've got over. you've got to have that. Because ah, if you don't have it, nobody else is going to have it for you. Ah, aye. aye. Oh, I remember everything he everything I tried today, he had an answer for it. He could box southpaw, orthodox, forward, back, oh he lettered me. So I remember going back to the corner on the fourth round and I was like to him, I was so frustrated. I was I think I was nearly greeting in the corner. And my dad's like, You're just gonna have to put it put it on him, like you're gonna have to like adjust you what you're doing. And I went out and I just rem- always remember still to this day and like the first twenty seconds I punched him in the balls. <laughs> Just to try hang him and all that done. I and all that done was make him more mad and they just battered me even more for the rest of the fight. <laughs> <laughs> and I always remember that. But one thing I learnt from him, which I still to this day, my nose was burst in the in the, the last round. And on the blind side of the referee, he had Velcro gloves on. Mm. And he put the Velcro bit in my gloves and was rubbing all the blood in my eyes and all that. And he was done like, that. The Russian. And he was laughing at me. But was it? But was it in a clinch or what? Ah, in a clinch. So oh. in the blind side of the referee, oh, right. he's rubbing so he on him. Starting to play a bit. <laughs> he run, like. I'd punched him. I think I just made them more angry, and he just wanted to. Oh, and he, he, fair enough. He, I mean, I was like, but don't get me wrong. He was unreal. The next year, the next cut, the next couple of months, we go to the European Championships. Don't get me wrong. It didn't do anything to my thing because the next month we go to the European Championships in Poland, and I get drew against a European champion for the couple of year before for Ukraine. And I beat him. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ah, it's, it doesn't have effect. And I get drew against a boy for Azerbaijan. And he beat me one no one points. Did he, aye? So between four two-minute rounds, the judges said that one punch landed in eight minutes between the two of us and get beat one no. But So uh, that one punch was the difference between you getting one beat One no, who the fuck could beat one no one points? And, and he, uh, don't get me wrong, I was like, fucking devastated. But the, that Russian boy who beat me the previous month in Germany, he went on to win it. He was oh, did he, aye? Machine Is he mate. still active now? No, he just disappeared. That's what happens to a lot of the Russians. They just there's that many of them they're so good and they just kind of get they'll, they'll be so they'll win everything then they'll disappear really eh? that's weird but he's but back then still with this day the top five boxer I've ever been in me it was right. unbelievable mm-hmm. so it goes for that then you dust yourself down you go to Europe you go to the European Championships got lost to that boy one now now once that ends that's in August that's now me a senior right so I'm like so is that you boxing punch dads basically <laughs> <laughs> fighting guys all done my dad that now so first tournament go to the go to the Tamar tournament in Finland flying had first first tournament four fights three wins got a silver medal my first senior tournament nice, and I was like ah, this is easy go to Macedonia same again two fights this time I won a gold medal 
But these countries have gone to these fucked up countries, Macedonia and Bosnia and all these different. I've boxed in for like 35 different countries all the world. Really? Aye, man. With Scotland, it was, it was unbelievable. It was, just, it was opening your, your mind to other cultures as well. To but everything. But don't get me wrong, you didn't really see, you seen some, some of the odd day, but most of the days you were just going to plane, hotel, fight a cunt, home, next day, hotel, venue, fight another cunt. Yeah, <laughs> That's how it works. Right, so you never so really at the end of the enough. tournament, you have a day before you go home, you kind of see different things. But yeah, in yeah. amateur boxing, you've got to, every day you fight, you've got to weigh in. So mm. you can never like go enjoy your food. Ah, I suppose, your pros. I suppose. And after that year, I just kind of push on. That was my first year at senior. That was in 2009. And that, that's me, a senior. So I won, two, won a silver and a gold medal. And at the end of that year, then 2010, Enter the Senior Scottish Championships, win that, that's a big thing day as well. Mm. Then later on that year, bang, go to Commonwealth Games. Then that's that's you, that's it. Uh, kind of go back once the once, once, then. once then once that's that's it, that's boxing's your your life now. Uh, I mean, that's had you accepted it. this was my life? We must interrupt this podcast for a breaking announcement. There has been numerous reports in the area of a beauty bomb ready to glow up. And it's going to blow away you beauty therapists one appointment at a time. Why? Do you conduct business correspondence with clients via DMs? Are you sick of late cancellations costing you money? Do you just wish you could provide your service without worrying if the client has the cash at hand? Oh, I need to go to the bank. Well, I have a solution to your confusion. Glowout is a service that aims to alleviate the stress involved between a client and the technician booking their appointments. Glowout makes it easy easy for clients to see appointments, to book them and to pay. It takes deposits and it gets late cancellation fees, which means you won't lose out in any money. Clients can pay by card or using Apple Pay. Glowout is also partnered with payment processor Stripe. Glowout also helps you manage your bookings easily by using your calendar. The busier you get, the more stressful it is to keep track of who you've actually got coming in and when. Glowout will help you do that. On Glowout, you'll also also be able to show off your portfolio, showing off your previous work so clients can check out what you've done in the past. It will also be implementing a feature in the very, very near to be future which will connect to your Instagram profile page. You will also be featured on the Glowout website. You'll be visible to potential clients in the local area. You'll also have access to your own admin panel where you can see the account balance, generate reports and turn your hobby into a business. Glowout is basically a just eat for beauty appointments. Can't beat the convenience, can you? The mobile app for iOS and Android is coming soon. But in the meantime, for $5.99 a month, you will have access to all these features. But if you sign up using 5 promo code, you will get the first three months free. You can't like that for a bargain, can you? Give your business the glow up. It needs to blow up and glow up before you glow out at this point. I don't get me wrong, I still had a, had a job at the time, it was like a metal stud partitioner. Like, I'm a joiner now, but back then I was like, I quit the apprenticeship because I had to... I had to what was your apprenticeship you were doing? It was called metal stud partitioner. Oh, so it was, that, it was, that, it was don't get me wrong, it was with my dad's company. Oh, so right. Wednesday so is actually no, he still works for the same company that oh, this yeah, happened. Right, right, it was right, just right. an office, they had a joiner aside, right, right. like a thing, so I got a hang for that. Then I work out on my own things, I left. So I, I'll get into the thing. So this is in 2010. So I still worked in 2010. Went to Commonwealth Games. They gave me the time off. Went to the games. Didn't work out for me. I had, I had one fight in the last 16. Went in, in, this was in India. Went into the fight. Was five points up getting into the last round. I got a bad clash. He got a bad head knock. And collapsed. Came out the ring. Got lost, the, lost the fight by one point. I came out the ring. Was talking to the BBC. And collapsed and woke up in hospital. Like <laughs> you collapse for the head knock. I don't know. I mean, the between the head knock, dehydration, mm, heat, exhaustion. Right. The fight was a fucking war. Uh, is that a different thing you need to get accustomed to as well? Like the humidity in certain countries. I like that was like uh, for the gobbles. You know what I mean? Mm. It's, it's, it's no like forty. Well, like, jump into the steam room and the like, fucking gobbles. Like, like, like forty, 40 degrees, and then this, this venue was so. And I, don't get me wrong, I think it was more the fight. And I, the guy elbowed me like in a, obviously it's not intentional, but in a clash, I, it was like a, a knock inside, Aye. and I had a big massive lump in the head. Fucking hell! And I came out the ring, and I remember talking to the guy in the BBC, and that's the last thing I remember. Did I you feel up, it coming on? No, I woke up in hospital. Aye, fuck, see. Yeah. F- How long after did he collapse? Did I think you it was like up? a day. So it was a full day with you. I think for? so. I I was out. I was thinking I was coming about, and I just remember waking up like whoa. Fuck's sake, man! Big massive lump. So what was it? He collapsed off. What did they diagnose it as? It was just like a concussion. 
Right, so was it the concussion he collapsed or was it a mixture of things? I think it was, a mixture. Con- I think it was more the heat and the, exhaust- the exhaustion of the, the fight as well. But yeah. then when we've done that, you live and learn, do you know what I mean? You ah, kind of no, just dust yourself down and you go. But it was some experience getting to the Commonwealth Games. Most people, if you go to a Commonwealth Games, and that's, just, that's the pinnacle of amateur boxing in Scotland mm. because mm. the odds they got at the Olympics is very, very rare. Mm-hmm. So you get to the Commonwealth Games and then usually most people turn professional. But I was only either 18 or 19 I was still very young mm-hmm. then in my mindset the next Commonwealth Games is four years away but it's in Glasgow aye do you know what I mean so you can't turn pro and leave you can't no you if can't you get that coming up man so what was so that four, four years did you say that four years a long time in space of boxing so, did it, so did you have to kind of make that decision like either you've got to continue at the highest level for four years you can't have any drop off a drop off and that's your fuck you, you give somebody the opportunity to take your position at your weight it's very hard to get back, do you know what uh, I mean? So, 2000, you dust yourself down, came back, had two fights in the Western District, won that, then that's it, you're into 2011 now. So the boy, boy in 2010, who won the Commonwealth Games, the boy called Sean McGoldrick for Wales, mm-hmm. he won the Commonwealth Games. So 2011, I win the Scottish Championships, as a, as a senior, I'm senior now, so I think you win the Scottish Championships, bang, that's you. Now I go to the European Championships. Well, I think I had a couple of tournaments in between, Go to the European Championships is Anchor in Turkey. First fight, first round. Hurt the guy with a right horn and snapped my horn. Fuck. How do you manage that? Just a bone. Just that unlucky thing. The bone popped out my horn, as you can see. The, uh, it's still see like it a bone. Like it's all the ligaments move a bit and all that. But, so that got cracked. Get flew home to Turkey. That's you. I was going to Anapa the week later. That's what I always remember. I was like, I'm going to Anapa with a cast on. Oh, what, man? <laughs> so go to Anapa. We've done all that. So you have the summer half where Anapa came back. This is now you the rest of the year. Had another couple of fights and then you go to the British Senior Championships is in London. That was in November. That was in 2011. Go down there and end up winning that as a senior to being a British Senior Champion which is hard. Mm-hmm. And the boy I beat in the final was the boy who won the Commonwealth Games the year before. Oh, really, eh? Boy for Wales, I aye, you know what that mean? That gave, gave you a confidence spot. It's a weird thing, do you know what I mean? You're just thinking, what, ha- what happens if the draw went your right way and I'd done this then? But, in a year, see that year, the the the, the maturity that I earned in that year, I, I couldn't have done what I'd done in 2011 and 2010. Right, I don't so know. You, you, you need in terms of maturity. Just in general, just the way, like just my body shape, just my confidence, right, just right. just in, a whole host of different things. Like I, the performance I put in in that final, I wouldn't have been able to do a year ago. Right, I see. Which is good that you ah, learn yeah, from everything. Do you know what I mean? So then that cracks you on from that. From me winning the 2011 GB Championships in London, I get offered to go into Team GB. And that's, How'd that that's feel it. getting offered that, man? I'm You're sick like, of that. Are you like, that's, that's your pinnacle is to get uh, down there. Everybody wants to be a GB boxer kicking about in your GB tracks. Out and <laughs> He's a little one, isn't it, man? Aye, do you know what I mean? You just think you're like fucking the dawn. <laughs> nah, what did you notice see when you started to box on Team GB? See, in terms of like the facilities, the training, did you know it was an, an upgrade, an increase? It's a different it's like It's like boxing it's like playing for Partick Thistle then got to play for Man United right really a big difference in what way what did you notice the facilities and that didn't know it's it's like something you've never experienced before now Scotland is is up to it we've got our own gym now Mm -hmm. but back then we didn't right we were training in Maddock in random club gyms every Sunday and all that stuff whereas they have a centre it's it's like a full leisure centre just their gym it's game to game they have access to everything they've got about They've got six rings, they've got running tracks, they've got their own accommodation, they've got the best of the bags, they've got the best of strength and conditioning, they've got physios, psychologists, you name it, they yeah, have it. Yeah, they're yeah, the yes. be- that's yeah, why yes. they're, they're, they're so good. Mm-hmm. Nah, of course, you're going to need all that's that. That's why they're so good. Yeah. At top level. But back then, that was, that was in 2000, 2011, and that was me, I was on that to 2013, and it was, uh, it was good, though. it was a good experience, mm. but I preferred being up here. I didn't like I was, just, this was in Sheffield so you had to move you had to go down just, uh, every yeah. week or every second week you had to go to Sheffield and stay down there for five days at a time right so was it just get a bit of homesickness was it I was not even homesick I was just like you just missed like even though I didn't drink but you you missed so much that uh, socialising with your pals, just pals just you're missing, you're you're missing so much Scotland it's a fucking I, accent just as well. you're missing different things and all that but in a way things but then come back up 2013 left GB now, same idea, go to the European Championships, go to the World Championships, and this time the Commonwealth Games is now 
next year. Mm-hmm. This is when it gets. So it was approaching. Aye, this is when it gets proper. Everything now is game, aiming towards that now. Mm-hmm. Then when that go to European Championships, then the next year go to the World Championships and Kaz- the next month, sorry, go to the World Championship in Kazakhstan. Now the boxing life's changing. Now the headguards come off. Right. First time. Was this a big? Did you feel notice a big difference in this? Aye, because it's a never had done it. Right, so you'd never fought without a headguard before? Never. Never? So how did you adjust ne- never to Never even sparred without a headguard on. Really? So how was the adjustment? It was weird, do you know what I mean? Because you could see so much men in front of you. Cause, do you think it worked? It was better? But so many cuts happened. No, for yeah. me personally, but a lot of just in general. Mm-hmm. But it, they've stuck with it and I think it's for the best that's, that's happened. I think so, how so? Aye, because it sets you up going to the pros. I suppose, I suppose, man. Do you know what I mean? So now, now you're going to the, the pros, fuck. aye, you're going to the pros and it sets you up, so... They set in at the pros, so that was in 2013, then 2014, now that's gone with games. Mm-hmm. But still, your, your place is not cemented until you win the Scottish Championships. Nah, so there was still that this, pressure to do this that. This year, but the Scottish Championships is in the Velodrome, the Chris Hoy Velodrome, fight facing Park Heed. Uh-huh. Then it's in there, and it's like a proper running track stadium, there's like 6,000 people. And for a Scottish Amateur Championship, that's rare. That that would never happen again. Will it? No, 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 no. no for How, no. Where is it often in front of? Where, where's the kind of capacity? Maybe five, six hundred, seven hundred. This one had five. It was mental. Is that because it was gearing Such up for a, the Commonwealth Games? Now everybody had the Commonwealth Games buzz. Ah, I see, I see, and I see. And Boxers got did a massive thing. Like by they promoted it so well, they had the best fight and the best by just by chance. No, by fixing because nobody got robbed. Only one person, but boy from my gym. Stuart f- should have maybe thought he'd better box one of my best mates loose but two of my best pals I can't uh, I can't go again <laughs> but, <laughs> I, but then he put loose is my best mate but we kind of a lot of people thought Stuart beat loose but uh, Stuart I think he just chilled but he ended up he goes back in the story he turned professional with, but I, me and my dad my dad trained me, Stuart and the boy called Steph Lavelle the three of us boxed in the same European same hangies and then the three is was were on the same different training camps and all the different things to go to the Commonwealth Games. Right. And uh, Stuart just missed out, but me and Steph went. Mm-hmm. But Steph got a bronze medal there. He boxed for my dad as well. So right, we had thing. So Stuart missed out. But when we go to the go to the Scottish Championships in the final, it was unbelievable. See fighting in the fucking the velodrome. I had so so many tickets. He's staying the gobbles uh, in the corner. Uh, Everybody come to see it was like a ten and a ticket. Atmosphere off unbelievable talking support. about pressure I felt pressure doing that did you Aye. is that just because you had a lot of home support a lot of people come to watch you and you win this you go to Commonwealth Games Aye. Did, 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 does pressure affect your performance I know it comes out I, I, I did a wee bit in certain, certain pro fights but this but was back then positively some people ne- perform I, better but some, some people it goes against some you. people it was kind of I always felt I thought about it too much mm. but and as an amateur I was like I'm going to swing this kind of boot I get in the first round man I knocked him out did you? Huh? I knocked Fuck him out in round two, put him down my body shot, and that was what a feeling. That was one of the best. That was a good buzz. Uh, just to, to front of everybody, people get after. Uh, it's people, a what a way to kind of people get after that, and you don't see knockouts in amateur boxing. I know, I know, it's quite a strange. So thing. see today that people, everybody's getting after that, and I would jump out. That was a good buzz. Win that, then bang. That's us. The, the team got basically announced on that thing. They had ten winners. Mm-hmm. You had me. You had the team, you had boy Akil Ahmed, boy Reese McFadden, me, Charlie Flynn, Josh Taylor, Kieran Smith, Lewis Benson, Scott Forrest, and Ross Henderson, and that was our team, and that was us, man, right through. Straight from there, the week later, I go to Portugal in a warm weather training camp for two weeks. Unbelievable. This for the Commonwealth Games? This is now the Commonwealth Games training. So, and you just went to Portugal? <laughs> Why did you get, <laughs> well, get It gets better. So we go to Commonwealth Games. But don't get me wrong, it was a training camp. Right. It was hard, but it was mere... It was like a a fun training camp, if that makes sense. Like we would do the training, have his beasters running and all that. Then we would get to go play beach volleyball. Oh, really? Or get to go to the shops and chill out by the beach or whatever. But it wasn't as hingy. But then it starts now. Because yeah, this is up. in April. The combo game's on the of July. Mm-hmm. So you've got to peak yourself. You can't kind of stay at the same uh, level, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? So from there, continue the training or a different sparring. And then like, right, we've got to Australia for four weeks. <laughs> That so you just a, went to Australia? That was our prep for the Commonwealth Games. Why have you just got to all these hot countries? We can't climatise for Glasgow. <laughs> Shut up. Are you serious? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, possibly but, I, so, I, I, for a new one, Glasgow. No, probably. but I hang your story. So we go to the Commonwealth Games in Australia. We go to Australia for four weeks. Right. Go to Canberra. But don't get me wrong, it's not a, This is training. Ah, yeah, I saw you had, you we, had two, we had two fights over there as well, like Scotland versus Australia. Uh, and the national coach for Australia 
it was Kev Smith, the guy who used to, who used to tell us we were all shit. Sure, he left it, huh? years later, so now he's in charge of Australia. But we have always, I've always still got a heavy, close, close bond. I'm still have to this day. Uh. So does my dad still talk to him? So he's now against me in the corner. Fuck Do you know what I mean? Sick. Like all the years later, after but he's, is, well, but he knows your I would game. I wouldn't be where I am at that point if it wasn't for it's him. It's weird as you say how it turns Which around. is weird how it turns around, do you know what I mean? So I boxed him, one of his boxers, I beat him. So oh, did you beat him? I, I, <laughs> he's still, he's obviously, I, I think he obviously liked obviously having against the kids. We had a heavy close relationship. Ah, yeah, but, but, but at the same time as well, because he's, he's, he's taught you all these st- strategies. St- you, st- uh, st- so it's the fact that it's working for you, that will have a wee bit of, he'll feel the, a bo- bit of goodness the for Boxing that. adapts, because he had me as a youth, now we're seniors and, styles change the scoring changes so what worked for him there it changed I'd change as a boxer compared to where I used to box when I was with him right right but this, don't get me wrong this was this is five years later mm, he was right, with me so in 2000, he was with me 2008 2009 2007 2007 2008 2009 this is in 2014 uh, so a lot can change do you know what I mean so a lot can change so in Australia box Australia twice beat them come back the next training camp's in Belfast go to Belfast and then it's kind of the same sparring I was sparring with boy Michael Conlon and all that kind of stuff. Spar all of them, and then for you know what, that's you, Conwell Game Village. You had to, I had to go stay in the Conwell Game Village, even though I stayed in the Gobble, I had to move out of the house for Why I had to go stay there for four weeks. Who? You're not to go to your house. You had to you? stay in the village. Why, in case you're fucking trying to jag yourself or something like <laughs> that? I don't know, eh? anything, you know what I mean? The head is all together. Just in case you go away and injure yourself. Maybe they could come in and look at you, you can see your, your man there or whatever, there's at the boxing. Really? Ah, that's you wonder what you wonder what so, you shacked up with some cunt? I, it's all, all your bo- all your pals. Aye, all the, the, the squad. Aye, all your squad. Just, just, I've, I've never been to the village. Is it like fucking houses and shit? Oh, it's all houses now, aye, aye. But it was all, all the village, all the best houses. It was, it was state of the art. Aye, I think. Because I remember they built it just for that, didn't for they? For that, now it's all just gas. Aye. Belters or houses, but they're saying. So I walked in in there and it was we all your same for your pals, you know what I mean? You had two houses. And so you've got all these different sports. You've got like netball, volleyball, table tennis, running, athletics, rugby. Then you've got these nine country boxing office schemes or for a shit, just carry on. <laughs> they just didn't didn't know how to do it. Nah, they just don't click with them, no. Clicks no, you, you, you need to click with them, you go with them all, but they're just looking like these are, these are all neds. What language are these cunts the, speaking? These are all neds. Ah, I don't I feel with it. these, but it was good to be going with everybody, but it was good laughing and fighting the come of games. So I'm obviously fair of gobbles, and then you come out and you're fighting and that. So that was the bat was the best up with this day. The best buzz I've ever had was walking out in my first fight in the SECC, fighting in the Commonwealth Games of your home country. It was mm. not like, oh, your home Would city. You say that was probably your pinnacle at that right. point? Nothing I've ever experienced like in my life. Still with this Still day. Still with this day. Still with this day. That walking out and then that first fight, getting your name announced. Because the guy announced I was Craig Stevens. He's news off for years and he announced us all in. And before my fight, you could hear him in the background jeering up the crowd. Uh. But I know 90% of this crowd is here to just to watch me. Right. Yeah, 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 boys, you know, that everybody's crowd. buying tickets for the specific uh, day because you're the Scottish so right? even people didn't know you were like, supporting the Scottish boys. the next fight is somebody from Scotland who's here from Glasgow and everybody cheers and then, and then he goes in fact even better who's here for the gobbles and their place goes mental <laughs> and they, then the day they come to 500 miles and then knock him out and oh what a buzz man oh, honestly right, boxed against a boy for Kazakhstan uh, for Pakistan sorry and just the, and just the buzz of that just fighting was fucking unbelievable how did you go in the fight? I won that Did fight, I think it won I. Just that, that was one of the pinnacles. Walking out to that fight, not even the fight, just the walking out aye. was like nothing I've ever felt. Is that the biggest been, support you'd had to date? Unbelievable. Did you realise so many people actually to, supported you? To date, between that, I, because, see, because a lot of people liked my style, see, because they'd seen me knocking that boy out in the velodrome. Aye. The, the Scottish finals. So you won a lot of fans. A lot of people had met, like, a couple of guys came on and sponsored me and stuff just for really? that, just and it never happened for that. Sure. So I, lo- I got a lot of attention from uh-huh. that. And I'd, 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 I'd kind of had like a pro style, I like to get in for a bod, like stuff like that. So that was good, fighting fighting that, won the first fight and then I, I, unfortunately in the quarterfinals I could beat off England. Ah, uh, bastards, just, English bastards. <laughs> but, but like that, you've got the highs and lows, you know what I mean? I've got the highs to the high, then two days later the lows to the lows. Mm, and I'm sitting, I remember sitting backstage with a towel in my head just thinking, I, I, what the fuck what the uh, day? rock bottom because I'd almost. put everything in yeah obviously you can say go pro but I didn't at this point I'd left the apprenticeship uh, and all that kind of stuff the people, you don't see that kind of thing do you know what I mean mm-hmm. I'm like what the fuck do you name obviously I'd, I'd made my decision I was going pro regardless of what the games I was going to do everybody did and I kind of announced it I was going to turn professional so I'm sitting there backstage so I, after the Commonwealth Games it is what it is 
you dwell on it. My man to actually get married like a couple of months later. They get married when they're, they're fucking 40. So they get married. Uh, and I'm just kind of chuckling and then I go to Ibiza. I remember sitting in the, the, the player in Bossa, like the Jet Apartments it's called, in Ibiza, just no far away from Ushuaia. And I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, I need to get a job or something. Like, it never crossed my right, mind. So reality kind of hit you after Aye, that? I was like, what, what the fuck? Obviously you'd pay a pro boxer, but you, you can't, you're not just going, in, you need something to, have ah, like a trade or whatever I and put everything blanket. in and I had never realised it until I'm sitting in Ibiza <laughs> <laughs> what a place especially so I think I was sitting I was so I think I at this point I had a couple of strawberry daiquiris uh, and I'm sitting <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm sitting and I'm sitting but see because the amount of people that came to watch me in all these fights I'd, go, I'd built a good relationship with different people mm-hmm. so I messaged the woman at the time who was a Lord Provost and I had to have her number which is fucking fried to think <laughs> and I just texted her in Ibiza for the strawberry daiquiris like Hi, I know it didn't work out. I appreciated the poor come of because I got introduced and she came to watch and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm just looking for a, a pre- or something. And she was like, Let me see what I can do. She got back to me. She was like, I would love to have an interview with City Building. Back. And I was like, I had an interview. This is fucking funny, right? So I was like, I'm the cleanest cunt in the world, right? I've not, I don't do anything. Like, I've always have. I'm st- very strict to what I do mm-hmm. don't drink nor it so, so I go to the thing past the interview flying colours all, all brand new go, <laughs> go right I fucking feel the drug test shut up because <laughs> I took two cocodium on the night before fuck <laughs> off man <laughs> so I'm sitting I pee into the cup and it comes up and the woman's like it says you're filled in opioids like, that's like, like heroin isn't it like opioids but that comes under the same thing as like uh, and things. Opioids, aye. but see because I'd wrote on the sheet things you've took in the last week aye. I'd wrote aye, co- wrote co- 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 and she was like that's that and she just said you feel the drugs I was like I've been spiked <laughs> <laughs> and I, rem- I remember I remember like you imagine my phone my dad and I was like my dad I feel the drug test he's like you're fucking wet <laughs> 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 the fuck you've been on and but I ended up walking out it was alright it was just because of the co- co- that's what they were alright about it just but still to this day like I've, I'm pure wary of that now see before pro fights not aye. I couldn't take them mm-hmm. I, I know that I couldn't see it stung with them aye. night nurse and all that as well I was like that to me you feel the drug test and I swear I've never seen I remember I had to phone my dad and tell he was buzzing, just getting yourself a job, get a thing. And he's like, ah, <laughs> so I the drug down. He's like, you're fucking wet. <laughs> Walked it all right. He was saying, I, phone. I, had to, I had to phone the guy who was at the building, and I was like, all right, mate, I feel the drug down. <laughs> And he's like, what? No, but I walked out, it was fine. And then a couple of weeks later, I started with Seth Bowden as an adult apprenticeship. Ah, dynamite. So how did you feel about getting into that? Did you just kind of I was like, actually I had, good. I actually, I actually enjoyed it. I actually got in and enjoyed it. I'm still here now, do you know what I mean? But no, I, I, went in, I, like I, went, I went into it. And I got took to it quite well, even though I'd came for the call. A lot of people knew who I was and stuff like that, but everybody. And that's me, but as soon as I, that's me, even though I'm a boxer, I've turned pro. Mm-hmm. So now it's the case I now need to train like a pro and make my pro debut. So my dad turns me and the boy that I previously said, Stuart, mm-hmm. me and Stuart, but both turned pro at the same time. Right. And it was, uh, that's us, man. Now we're pros. So what was the difference in terms of pre- preparing for a fight as an amateur compared to preparing for a fight as a pro? Long rounds. Like, you know, you go between fighting three, three minute rounds to now you're fighting six minute, right. six rounds. And now you fight from fighting in a training camp to fight five fights or four fights in a tournament with four different styles. Mm. Now you're just fighting, you've got 10 weeks or eight weeks to train for one guy. Right, right. so it's one style you're geared up One style and you can suit all your sparring and all that to suit that style, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is... Very good, you know what I mean? And that suited me. I had, I loved it. So you just the actual pro. It's always people. What was always, he liked about it, man? People always say he's always had a pro style and stuff, but just the general, just just training for one specific thing rather than like try to train for us. You can't. You're training for all different styles nah, as an amateur. You're, and you don't really know what you're and everything is fast as anything. So now you're obviously can do as a pro style, and it was good just to adjust to that. And it's the same as me. My dad was learning as well because he's went for being an amateur coach for all the years as well. Now he's mm. learning on the job. Aye. Then same with me and Stuart. So he's took me and Stuart then same idea. You just crack on and you just learn on the job. Do you know what I mean? You, you have your pro debut. That was a buzz as well. I think your pro debut fighting in the Houghton Hotel. Everybody coming to watch. He had some buzz of that. Knocked the boy out in the first round. What a buzz. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> so see your fighting style. Did that change? No. Because remember you said I it just, first. The exact same. Because I was, I was, I was ruthless. I loved. 
people always know he's little, had a belt to the left hook to the body, mm -hmm. and that's what I used to always stoke people with. Mm -hmm. My pro fight stoked the boy in the first round with a left hook oh, to the body. The body ah, right? fucking brilliant. Everybody's jumping about and I'm thinking, this is canter. Second pro fight stoked the boy again. And I was like, that's just fucking easy, man, right? So this gets to, this now we're in 2006, no, now we're in 2015. Mm -hmm. So I've boxed in the two fights, two fights have been in the Houghton Hotel. I'm like acting my manager at the time, a guy called Alec Morrison, brilliant guy, done a brilliant job for us, and I was like acting him, you know where I want to fight? The Gobbles Leisure Centre. <laughs> so <laughs> you say that? He was like, ah, let me see what we can do. So 2nd of May 2015 was the same night that Manny Pacquiao boxed Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. So you imagine every single person is going to stay up to watch that fight. Right. So there's no better thing than watch that fight to go to another fight before it, then go uh -huh. to the casino. And get you hyped up. So we had a fight in the Gobbles Leisure Centre. That's that was up there with one of the best things as well. How was your experience of that? Coming out to bits and pieces. <laughs> was the place jumping? Aye, cunts down on top of chairs, cunts with their taps off. The gobbles come being full of effect. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, came out to that, people gone mental, came out. I only done it, I think it was only a four rounder at the time, top of the ball, fighting your own thing, fucking packed, packed to it. Coming out, man, fucking leathered some poor Hungarian cunt. <laughs> But you're, the next time you're, these people you're there, they're there for you to learn, but they're there for you to beat and look good against. You know what I mean? And this guy made I look good against him, just but I couldn't stop him. I wanted to get a knockout. Mm -hmm. If it was a six rounder, I would have. But in the fourth round, it was only four rounds. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was some buzz. You just fighting for all your pals and front of the goggles. Ah, uh, especially when and on. Such cunts a just shouting. Cunts, you're in back to the corner, and people are just shouting the maddest shit. Just. Fucking smash his cunt in. No, no, no. <laughs> then I remember, then you've got it in video. So the guy's corner team is a mad older guy with glasses, that was his coach, and here on my pal was like, shut up, you're a specky bastard. No, like, <laughs> oh, fuck's sake, man. So, like, mad guns, so but... this, is, well, this is my third pro fight, so then, then you'll just kind of crack on, then you move, move on for that. It's some buzz. So what we see at that point, you were 4 and all as a pro boxer. What, uh, do you think you'd learned a lot in that short space of time compared to your amateur career? Is there anything you picked up differently fighting the pros? Nah. Just to, to take your time a bit, man, and just... But then, this is where we veer off to LA. Right. Then this is so what kind of opens point. it up our right, eyes so going away to, LA to the rest of it. So, a good thing happens in May 2016 is... So, Ricky Burns signs with Eddie Hearn. Or they get a fight. So, he gets a world title fight in a hydro. Right. And I get to go in the undercard. Then that's what makes it... You're like off. Oh, that's fucking good. Right, so, so that's your biggest. So fight to do. like I so we had to fight on undercare the Ricky Burns on a six rounder fighting on Sky and all that. That was some buzz. Just a different place again. Mm. Same again. A box. He defends his world title this time. Defending it. A box on his undercare again. It wasn't until the year the year later. Um, he he's world champion. So he fights another guy for a world title. A guy called Julius Dongo. And I got a, I got my first Scottish title fight on the on his card oh, on really, Sky, yeah. fighting for a title. Now you're fighting ten rounds right. in the high so and that was it was, up, that was good. So it was round about that time as well. So I'm still working for City Building at the time. I'm running, what getting a bus or a train to. I'm getting us or so I'm getting a subway or whatever to the to our site. Our site was in Broomhill, just doing a party. Oh. Then I was getting that. Then a full shift, eight to four. They on the, you're on the tools. You're your fucking grafting thingy then I would put a full sweatsuit on and run to the gym straight to the gym for a two hour session then go home so I was leaving the house at 7 in the morning and I'll get home to 8 at night mm -hmm. and it was like that for like the first two a year and a half two years as my professional career really aye. and I was feeling it coming out of the fights I was fucked because mm -hmm. I, I was 100 I million old and everything no taking a break. so I remember being on the site and I get announced I was fighting for the Scottish title fight and stuff and the guy, the old boss at the time, a uh, guy called Chris Dobson, brand new, and he was like to me, why don't you ask, like, for some time off? And it never dawned on me, do you know what I mean? I, I, one thing, I was like, I don't like asking for stuff, like, I, don't, I just always, right, is what it is. So I was like, fuck it, you're fucking right. So I knew the guy, one of the guys, Gordon Duggan, still, still to this day, he's one of the top guys at City Building, but such and such a good guy. And he introduced me to a guy called Graham Parson at the time, at this time he was a managing director. And I thought, fuck it. If you don't ask, you don't get. Mm -hmm. So there was HR managers, like a woman called Sean McGrath. She's in charge of like all the the media and all the the HR and all your wages and stuff. So I went up to see them, and she was like, "What can we do for you?" So I went up with my pal, and he, I was just like, well, "I was looking for to get time off for my fights, 
but I still need to obviously live, so I still would still like to get pay. Mm-hmm. She was like, what would you need? And I said, I, w- I would just need like six weeks off to train for the fights, and in return I would put the City Building logo on my shorts and stuff, and she was like, done. Right there and then, done deal? Done deal. No, see, that was decent to them, man. And, and still that day, that was in 2016, and they done that with me for until my last fight in 2022. Fucking hell, man. Six so fight. The honour that. Six weeks every fight. Fuck's sake, man. And I always had the City Building, had the City Building logo in my shorts and done photo shoots with Wander's photo shoots with me sitting in the thing. I've got a drill in one hand and a boxing glove on. <laughs> There's ones with me, I've got a ham on one hand and I've got gloves with my neck. And just, just match it. But for doing that, for the six weeks off, Aye. and they gave me six weeks off, full pain, let me do it. And it let me do what I need to do. And that made a massive difference. That changed the dynamics of being a pro boxer because right. you could actually train three times a day without having to worry about fucking going to hang a door I know do you know what I mean know, just mate, in a mindset and, and, and there's no I understand it's a, it's a big company but there's no many companies that would do that for you no definitely no 100% because you know I mean? so, City Building's so big as well man if and it was, like and, a and company, it was good and it was good harder. exposure for them as well I suppose ah, getting on things so for the straight away so like my building site at the time 35 people took tickets and all the people for the site came to the fight fighting in the hydro I sold like 700 tickets to all the people or well, the Brit- and that was uh, some buzz as well. So oh, fight, fighting see. my first get- first title fight in the Hydro. So see, see, up until this point, as you see, you've been busting your cunt, working at your job and training for that fight. What did this day improve your performance now you were given like six week half before the fight? So much, because you can just purely focus just on boxing. Uh, yeah, you're not distracted. There's, not, there's nothing else in distracting. You don't have to worry about fucking going to go pick up this cunt for what I've gone to see this person to do that job or mm. got to see him to hond in your lines or I'd nothing I just people just left me alone and just my dad would say do this do this and then that was it uh, but the best thing it. the best thing obviously to get in amongst that time so 2015 I met my girlfriend mm-hmm. my fiance now Heather and that was obviously a, you're going into a relationship and you've got to it's hard to just to get in a relationship and then all you're doing is training uh, some people don't get time. some people don't get that that you can't go out and do this all the time or you're going to the gym every day I'm travelling to this place to spa that place to spa but she's been absolutely absolute gem it's all I mean, still there ah, that's what you need somebody that's kind of appreciative of your goals and that kind of stuff I, and, and she's, the fact that they make, make she was, she was at every fight she's been at every fight brand new she doesn't hang in she's just there chilling mm. she's a she's a diamond so amazing she's good, man so she's still we're still together so we've got water in house and stuff so now we're Fine, but in that thing, in that aspect of it, so we're fighting in the hydro, everybody's good. That's that was some buzz fighting there, and I always remember this is this is where so I had to make championship weight, so I had to weigh an eight stone nine. I think I weighed in like eight stone eight point twelve or something, and I mean I was skin and bones. Oh really? I, I cheekbones. I look, I looked if I'd been full of meth. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy. What was your weight in between fights? Did you balloon over or did I you? I was always sitting about ten stone. I'd always put a stone right, about. Right, so it was a fair bit. But this one, so I had never made the weight before. Mm-hmm. So I made the weight, and I just remember making the thing in and got to stay in the Crown Plaza because we were fighting in the hydro. So I was like, I'll stay there, and that means I can just walk across to the venue, blah, blah, blah. And I remember my dad was like, Before you, before you will come to my house and we'll kind of just go back through the tape. My dad's always big enough to like catch up and go through your, your game plan and all that kind of Aye. stuff. And he's like, That to me see what weight you're so I was 8 stone 9 like the day before or on the Friday weighing in and your pants in the scenic centre then the next day he's like I jumped in the scales and I jumped in the scales man and I was like 10 stone 4 <laughs> I'd, put, I'd put on like fucking 19 pun or something in there 18, 19 the fuck did you eat? I'd spanked about 400 fucking lemonade and limes <laughs> <laughs> so it was it all just, it wasn't just water weight was it basically aye can you do that that's fucking I swear, mental I swear mate honestly. so what does that do for your performance though if you're putting on that much weight I felt as if I could run through a door really aye, aye? I felt like a so fucking animal benefited you I felt a unit about shorts and bounce off you aye. but looking back I felt sluggish as anything mm, nah, so I hadn't trained it that way I hadn't sparred it that way right. see the actual when I looked back performance it was a decent enough performance won the fight won the fight easy but I, sh- I could have been sharper and looking back I, c- I could have I could have probably stopped the boy uh, just yeah, by yeah. if I was to switch on for what I'd done but mm. uh, you live and learn you learn from so it did you, know you learn I mean? after that aye because I'd never done that again aye, aye, aye. my dad was made sure that I did it again <laughs> <laughs> so that was the thing so that was 2000 that was 2017 aye so from that fight we go to straight to LA the week later right, straight right. to LA right in training camp aye so was that the first time you'd went there 
No, that was uh, the second, second time. Second time, time I would done it the year before, game. 2017. I 2016 the first one. Went down 2017 and straight to LA, but it was just as good. But it was a bit different this time. I've just came off a training camp. Right. I couldn't really give a fuck ah, about Stone so kind of, Did you still go and spar? Ah, you have to. Ah, you know, of I mean, course, you can't you're there. You're not going to fuck. My dad wouldn't let you know spar anyway. <laughs> you'd be so him, we go. Uh, we just go and spar. Some buzz. Mm. Then the difference with that one at the weekend, we went to Vegas and all that. Went to see Canelo Alves was fighting Julio Cesar Chavez, uh, Julio Chavez Jr. at the time in a Cinco de Mayo, which is a Mexican weekend. Aye. And it was a uh, that was some experience as well. Got to, got to Vegas and seen that. Where did you get up to in Vegas? I'd have I've been, to, I've been to Vegas six times since. Have you? Oh, I, I've never been. What a place, man. Aye. Uh, for boxing, casino, wasn't that? Every time we went to LA. We always end up in Vegas for the weekend because really? there end up being a boxing fight on or uh, just geez. to break up because we had to have like Monday to Friday was just constantly just fighting cunts. Right, I and suppose Then at the weekend didn't... we had a bit of time off and we drove, we used to drive for LA to Vegas. How long does it take? Three and a half, four hours. Is it? That's not too Freight bad. Fight through the desert. Uh, what a drive. It was unbelievable. Then since then, me and Heather have been back twice as well. Uh, what a place. Just in general, just a place where I bought, where I Floyd Mayweather fight and stuff. Oh, uh, really? But with Heather? Or no, you? when, when me, before that, me and my mates end up going as well. So uh, I've been uh, rapid. What a place. But I didn't drink, so it's no, <laughs> it good to get mad uh, at. Totally different just, experience. Just a different experience. Mm. So we, we were done, uh, went to that, and then it was just kind of, you just crack on with your career and just kind of hang on. But then that's when it starts to get now you're in the title fights, you don't want to go back the way now. No, I do you thought. So like, and then the next year I got myself in a British title eliminator and I had a first away fight in Belfast. And that's when I kind of changed fighting in big shows and I lost, that was my first loss. Lost in points to a boy. Either. How did you deal with that experience? You've kind of got, I had experiences with had losses as an amateur, you dust yourself mm, doing So those. it was not your first Can loss, it? was there anything you could have took for it though? Did you take it and fit? Aye, or? obviously just What's fight, the difference fight. between losing as an amateur to a pro? Because I imagine it's a bigger scale. Aye, because as an amateur you just fight back the, the next week. Aye. As a pro you've now got to wait another you know, opportunity to come again, do you know what I mean? Do you think that, does that frustrate you? If you did, 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 kind of need to wait? Did I at the time and it's kind of a lot of things went on and then you just kind of just dust yourself down and then mm. go again just crack point, on they put money about it I know definitely and if you don't know. take the opportunities when they come you're never going to get them do you know what I mean so uh, that was good but growing up obviously even though I was still staying the gob was still staying with my granny at the time and the gob was and obviously even though I was pro everybody still came and supported all the pro fights people don't have to do that that's the big part people didn't see selling tickets and shit like that if some people if you don't if you have no good the right kind of people if you don't sell enough tickets you don't fight Nah, and sure people don't up. see that side so see if you've not got like a group of people or sponsors or whatever that's not going to watch you thing, but one thing I've always had doing the gobbles is the support yeah, even right. when I'm like even though it's, it's nice now it's still kind of rough but you still get the odd bit of uh, fucking mad cases jumping about but, oh it's the fucking gobbles but, everywhere. but I got on with everybody uh. but uh, one time like Heather my girlfriend is the total She's obviously grew up in Clyde but she's she's quiet, like she's no grew up in a scheme. Mm-hmm. So like one one night we were out jogging and we're then down past it's like the Clyde side and you've got all these wee guys and they're all getting mad with it. So like you have to run down a path before you get to them so they can see you through the bottom before you kinda get. So I run down the Clyde side and all you hear is Let's smash these cunts. <laughs> One of you guys. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, man. Hell's like, I'm, we're not going down. And I was like, oh, I'm not adjusting for a couple of you guys, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I dress, I always had the snood on black. I dress, I'd always look like an assassin. I always wear black. Me and my dad are the same, just always black. The only thing that ever changes colours sometimes are trainers, but always black, man. Right? So I'm dressed, he's the tall, like an assassin. Hell's thing, and all you hear is, I smash these cunts, man, and I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. So, thing and done, and I get on the course, and then obviously I put my hand in, and for, surely, thankfully, one of you guys like, oh, you know what's happening, and they'll just spot on, you know what I mean? Because they know who you are. Because uh, like, all these wee guys, when we had an amateur club, you saw the wee guys you see about, uh, they're, so all, the they're all brand new, they're always they're always sound, no trouble or whatsoever. And I just always remember that, and hell's, you're just thinking to yourself, what well, funny of you guys? What happens if they didn't know me, but some poor cunts getting well up to it? Oh, mate, mate, it happens, man. <laughs> I know, then. The, another funny one was man had time me and Heather we came back for the tune I think we were we were getting something to eat we went and picked something up it was a Friday night we went and go pick, pick something up in the, for, for food and parked up the motor at the time got the motor so we're walking for the motor into the close next thing you know I can't barley clav on big kitchen knife it was like that to me shouted for about, it was maybe about 100 years away, shouted, 
how you're taking me a long to do a cunt I'm like ah fuck cunt's <laughs> <laughs> holding a kitchen knife with a bath what, 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 what do you do? Uh, I don't know fuck what do so, you do? so Pedro's obviously she's fucking oh my Pedro god I, so, I, obviously I wear specs right but obviously the thing I don't want to see anybody with my specs on right I wear specs right <laughs> so I'm like ah there though hold my glasses man if this cunt if this cunt comes anywhere near me man I'm fucking I'm going I'm not, I'm not no, fucking obviously. not taking somebody around to do us <laughs> <You're laughs> acquaintance to murder man <laughs> Go, gets no far away from me from maybe from, from me you're away stone and holding this big blade looks at me wearing a bar cover I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm fucking you're seeing yourself you're, you're nah, butterflies you know what I mean I think to myself what, what do you do in that situation pulls the bar like cover and it's like ah, are you doing my man how are you doing how's the boxing <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, fuck me, man. I was like, well, all right. I was like, and then obviously I realised to it, and I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what the fuck you doing? He's like, ah, come and get away to his on Facebook. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do him. <laughs> He's like, ah, you're doing heavy well for yourself, man. You're doing heavy, done, done scheme proud in that. He's like, ah, catchy, but away. You fucked off. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? Like, what just what? happened there? Aye. Did they still have the blade on him? Aye, but just wanting a bit when he's home. Aye, right back down, man. Just passed away, back, away back again. I'm just fucking cracked. Right, up. so Heather's like, what the fuck? So like, how the fuck do you know these people? And I'm like, thank fucking know the people. I know, man. Do, do you know what I mean? It's meant to the country just like that because he didn't know you. Thought he didn't you'll know take, you. I, you'll, I, you'll take my line to do it. I've got my specs, my hat, and all that one. Just, just mind the main business. And oh, you'll take my line. And all of a sudden, I've had to take my hand. I've took my glasses off. And he's like, ah. all right, Joe. <laughs> how, how, how's the boxing fucking hell man I was like ah, oh fuck me don't get me wrong a party obviously is like ah uh, you shit yourself can't get a fuck fucking big fuck, blade man. He's like, ah. so I, go, I swear up the house and hell I was like oh my god next thing you know man 5-10 minutes later he turns a commotion man he's getting chased along the road with a cunt with a machete <laughs> a bigger machete <laughs> a bigger ma- <laughs> and you're just like ask the gobbles man fucking. sometimes you don't hear anything and then a lot happens ah, in that I thing. Know, silence is usually an answer. But thank, fuck, thank fuck everybody right. leaving with the nerve because I've never had the only time. Ah, just as well, but mate. that's a weird situation. I remember saying to my dad, my dad's like, oof, man. My dad was like, it's a fucking crack, him. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck's sake. But that's that, the thing, but you're open, you're fucking catching my good man, or you're getting hit with that sword. Exactly. Like, what do you do in that situation? Just well, you knew the cunt, man. Thank fuck. Fucking hell, man. Honestly, thank fuck. And I just always remember how I was telling. I was talking to her a few weeks ago about it, and she was like, "Remember that? Like, what, what did you do? What happens if that, that I didn't know that boy? Some cunt was getting made to go hang ah, be, be an exception, ex- 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 <laughs> and else he was going to be the one getting chased with the fucking ten or so after somebody else. You know what I mean? Hell. Mental. It's funny. And you still stay there, <laughs> bro. Never leave. So the only thing I done with that, I actually moved for the gobbles. Now I stay in Oatlands. Is it opens like, that bit it's like see where the roundabout is there's like two fucking roundabouts aye. is it the other side aye. I know exactly where you are so if I can you can just join them off a poem with E ah, so I basically exactly it's everywhere Shawfield Doug Stadium is so I, I stay in the nice part now ah, yeah, I know still exactly. the gobbles so nobody from the na- gobbles? nobody from down there grew up in the gobbles they have never they oh, don't yeah. know where the gobbles is really aye, aye. so you're all just mad outsiders aye they're all the way from from Oatlands like, you stay in the gobbles aye, Oatlands Oatlands aye, Oatlands the new Oatlands <laughs> <laughs> how long is it before you get to try and get rid of the Gorbals moniker because Gorbals is pure schemey so I did the Gorbals well the, all the high flats are coming down now so there's, there's four high flats in Waddle Court and there's two high flats in Caradonia Road Caradonia Road get officially that's coming down next year mm. and then that'll only be Gorbals was always known for the high flats uh, there was always lo- there was always loads of high flats and then now they're all coming away now that's where uh, now they've moved other people out the flats into nice houses but now all the houses, it's every house, there's no bad streets anymore. Uh, yeah, is it? It's, it's all nice. It's nice, it's nice as fuck. Aye, everything's, everything about it, even the, the health centres are built up. Mm, I'm the, not the ev- health centre. Uh, the police stations are mad fucking, they're a bad blue building. The police stations are built up, the health centre used to be, that was the worst part about it probably, we used to be all scruffy building, now that's an absolute fucking, it's like Dubai Mall. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I can't even imagine, mate. It's just new, like, you wouldn't even know, unless you were looking for it, you wouldn't even know what it is. So that's all new. Everything's shit about the fucking libraries. There was bits of grass that looked rough. Now it's got brand new flats on it. Uh, I the roughest the part, heavy, the the heavy roughest, the roughest the part of the gobbles is is their graveyard, but that'll end up being a fucking outdoor pool or something. Uh, in a couple I need of years. out, man. That'll be a theme park <laughs> soon, fuck's sake. Aye, man, that'll be an ice shrink or something. They'll do something good to it, man. They'll, 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 they'll hang you out a bit. But other than that, everything else is, is good. Nah, <laughs> dynamic, man. It's, it's one because of gentrified it's foxy because it's so close to the. the but it's got uh, a lot of people still in it, like. All the different things, but everybody for doing there, 
no matter what, everybody will always say all right and never have any problems, mm. even for the guys for the, the corner shops to the chippy to being in co-op to everybody. Everybody's always saying better. It's always been like a bit for myself. I would always give everybody time. I'd always go on yeah. with everybody. I'm not a cocky cunt. I'm not cheeky. I'd like to go on with everybody. Mm-hmm. That's the way I've always, yeah, always been that way. You know what I mean? What you get, until you get until somebody cracks us when I'm in the ring, I, I change. Aye. I brings just, it down on you. I tried, I then I still nothing it did. I always say that, man. I would, as soon as somebody hits me, I'd, I'd, I'd sit sitting a ring, I'd just change. Uh, the but then, then, it, then as soon as the bell goes, that's it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's weird as anything. Do you think that's done a lot for you? See, Jink, would Jink see if he didn't have boxing, would it have been different in the street for you? Nah, because my you, kids got my dad at didn't drink. In terms of like violence, do you think it would have been more violent? As you say, you're I can't suppose. imagine. It's, 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 it's either, like, it's either in there or it's no. Uh. And not, Obviously, I've, I've seen it growing up, all different things, people getting fucking stabbed and all kind of things, but I have no... I thought, like, fuck that. Aye, aye. Do you know what I mean? But there's a lot of boys you grew up with end up in the jail or end up fucking deed or, or mm. whatever, but I've never been about that thing. Don't get me wrong, because my dad he's the coach, man. He'll never fucking... He used to go, man, I used to hide. Was there the people who'd go out and get mad with it or drink, man? I used to be hiding, it was a pure... pure Hangman getting home and hit with kid and hiding jars on the tail in my room and all that. That was, that was, that was my fucking, that was my, uh, <laughs> that was, that was my drink. That was, that was me being bad, I. But other than that, growing up down there, I was fucking brilliant. And everybody, I says, everybody to this day always gave us full support. And now I finished my career. Now I can go into the coaching side and doing PTs and stuff. And a lot of the people will always message me now. I still play that support. I see. So see, you'll see for like when you experienced that loss uh, in Belfast, compared to up until when you decided to retire. What went on in, in that time? What changed for you as a boxer? Covid, man. Covid. Oh, fuck that. So it's that so fucking fun. hit you hard then. I, like, they don't get me wrong. On the, the fight before Covid, so that was Covid when the Covid came about. I was like twenty twenty, wasn't it? Aye. March or twenty, like run about that time, mm. wasn't it? So. In 2019, in November, I had a, a title fight on Sky, WBA, and an Eddie Hearn show, and I actually boxed the boy who beat me in the Commonwealth Games, boy called Kez Ashfak, mm-hmm. and fighting in that, didn't really feel as good as what I could have, lost the fight on points, but I didn't lose it on points because I got an elbow in the head, so I got, ended up getting a like, massive hole in my head. Fuck. My head burst open wide, so the fight gets stopped. Oh, the cut. right, 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 right. But because it been passed a certain amount of rounds, it goes to points, and he'd yeah. won more rounds, so I lost on points to that. Then from that, I didn't fight again until two years. Really? You know what I mean? For another two years? Two I thought year. two years? Two years. Fuck's sake. So, were you still training in that, eh? To, to the next day, how? Aye, you, can still... only, you can only, tra- don't get me wrong, I've always, because I don't drink in that, Aye. I've always, I'm always fit. Uh-huh. Always been fit. And my dad, because my dad's always had, is, is in the gym training. So, I've, I've has always been, I was always fit. But it's the difference between fit and fight fit. It's uh-huh. two different things and it's training. You can train as much as you want but see if you've not got a fight date and an actual opponent. It's hard to get your all when you know you're kind of you got nothing to come for. Uh-huh. And there's only so many rounds. You know, there's no point in sparring every three times a week or two times a week with nothing to gain for. Know, you're just going to... You need that added motivation, uh, don't you? Just talking to doors, man. <laughs> Down the lines, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. My dad's always good, good at that. He's like, there's no point just sparring for the sake of it. So he would just have uh, his body sparring. Just brain cells. Ah, he's just not getting punched in the heat. So uh-huh. he would have his body sparring which is kind of the same except you're just getting punched from the shoulders to your hips right? but you can, you can still go full it's full out uh-huh. and it's still very intense but it's not as the same like you don't, you've not got the same defence because you're like I'm not going to get punched in the face so you're just kind of lackadaisical messing mm-hmm. about but that kind of the Covid fucked it but one of the I was I never affected because I at my work didn't I didn't get a uh, what do you call it when, when people got I, I didn't get into that I was working the whole way right through really, it yeah. I had emergencies because at the time with my job in City Building we had to get we worked in the homeless unit get like plywood not a flares check or a windy so at this point they were having to rehouse everybody off the streets Aye. so all the homeless so I, I just didn't stop I just yeah, kept working yeah. so it didn't really affect me at yeah. that point we bought our own house mm-hmm. and we got delayed six months because of that because of Covid Aye. Had everything packed away, ready to move in, and COVID hit, and we're still staying, oh, in, my, staying in my granny's house we in boxes. Shut up, man, living had, in a boxes. Had a brand new house, boat there, we named in it, we didn't have the keys. Fuck it, it took six months to get the keys? No, six months because we. I obviously all the paperwork, not all, le- all the legal letters, all the uh, different, just different stuff. Thankfully, it all kind of worked out, because uh, we were meant to move in in like the February and we ended up no much until the end of July. 
fuck's sake, man. And that's a pain in the arse as well, do you know what I mean? You're sitting loving our boxes. I uh, living in a, in, under somebody else's feet and you've got your own gaff, that's the fucking arse. Different thing, so I was obviously stayed with my granny, so. But other than that, then I just came to a thing and then I ended up having only had, since 2019, that loss, I ended up only having three fights. I had lost one in Bolton, same kind of thing, first fight in two years, took an eight rounder just because I needed to fight. Right. I lost that on points. And it's kind of that, by this point, I was kind of, I knew that I was just kind of, I was just kind of falling out of it. No yeah, thought, eh? but, and a coach said, I love being in the gym, I love fighting, but myself, she just constantly, at this point, you're 190 odd fights, you're just constantly making weight. I was like, I can't be arsed in this. Mm, at that point, you just kind at of lost point, the passion. At this point, and then in last year, 2022, boxed in the Hydro in uh, May, won that, and that set me up, then I got offered the, McCann fight and on BT Sports doing the O2 in London mm -hmm. too big an opportunity to, to knock back took that obviously he's become as good fresh as anything just styles then then he suit me lost that and then then I kind of knew when I came out the ring I kind of knew for that I was like kind of knew my dad says to me as well that's kind like, of the nail on the coffee I, my dad was like got into the coaching the new obviously there's no point and so he kind of pushed you into the coaching aye he did as well, as well. Push one, you, but kinda one thing about my dad that. as well he would never just want somebody to fight for the sake of fighting aye, or no. some day they're for it's, aye, yeah a lot of people who would who don't care about that aye. but my dad's obviously always puts everything first but especially me because obviously I'm his yeah. fucking boy so mm -hmm. maybe it's a bit more responsibility mm -hmm. but I kind of knew myself and then it took me but so that was in that was in November and it took me to Two, three weeks ago to officially announce it because I'd, I had it wrote out for four months really nice. and I just didn't know why I'd say it but as a jink it was like once I say it that's me say that aye, that's, that's me it. fucking and I would never go see cut, cut, come out of retirement six months later aye, I fucking don't think I, I've no go, I don't think I'll have that kind nah, of thing once you retire you're kind of retired so but now one thing I've always said I've always been like a, 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 I like to analyse the game mm -hmm. and come up with game plans and just I, it was a pain in the arse that I couldn't date myself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I can read a fight for other people does that, does that make sense really eh? how's like, that fuck those <laughs> is this were you able to do it before you, when you I, still even as my, when we had an amateur club I'd always like to come up with game plans and like to come up with different um, reading fights and come up I knew what I wanted to do but sometimes like, I just couldn't get I was always so nervous and stuff like that mm, overthinking nah, things kind of but I it. love to come up with game plans and I'm, I, I know the game and say that I know mm. everything and one thing I've always said, I don't. I've got a very good memory. I don't. I could rename you every place, and every and the name of every opponent, and the every result I've ever had. And you I'll, have got quite a lot of stats. You're telling stories. And a hundred recollections. And hundred and ninety-eight fights. I don't forget things. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, and I was, so I'm just getting things. So now, my my dad's obviously he's a very good pro trainer. So he now has Josh Campbell, Elliot O'Donnell, Reagan Glacken, David Kelly, Jack Turner, and Nathaniel Collins. Six boxers and they're all undefeated. Nathaniel was the Commonwealth and British champion. Mm -hmm. He's just no, he's signed. He's just there. signed with Frank Warren. He's fighting in three weeks' time, in the in, in London. So we'll go down to London for that. And then you've got Josh and Jack. They are both fighting on the Ricky Burns World Lemon Kid. Right, right. The week before, Reagan's fighting in the Brayhead Arena for defending his Scottish title. Then the night after, Reagan. No, the night after Jack and. Um, Josh fighting the Braid boy Elliot he fights for the Celtic title so it's in the next four or five weeks you've got six of the boys all fighting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's it's fucking ah, it's so it's constant you know so he I mean? does yeah. I imagine your dad needs every hand he can get you know what I mean? so, especially somebody that knows and that we've never had him. we've never had somebody else in the gym it's always been my dad and me helping him really now, eh? now, so now we've things? got two guys boy got Paige and Paul They've been they've been in every pro corner. They help out every gym, so they're part of the team. But Page stays in Edinburgh. They've got the same thing. But in every fight, they're there at every fight. Aye. But in the actual terms of just the training in the gym every day, it's just my dad. And then obviously now over the past six months, he's been me. And then now he can just focus on taking on the fan on the pads or one of the pads. Then and I can take the rest on the bags. Mm -hmm. I'll take the rest on a circuit. And then I've, I I'm now obviously I spent biggest majority of life boxing for Scotland mm -hmm. so now I want to go, I'm going to go in and help amateur boxing Scotland and get a, a role with them and go in and help out with them nice man so um, what do you think you can bring for like your career into this uh, amateur squad to teach them so everything they've they've done so a lot of things with boxers I just found a lot when a boxer if you go into a group of boys and you and they don't believe or they don't respect you 
you have no chance. Yeah, definitely. They'll not no, listen to you. No. And I think that's like with anything in the mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, but a lot of the people see everything all these boys are training for to go to the Europeans, the Worlds, the Commonwealth Games. I've done it. Mm-hmm. I've I've done so every, that lived every, experience. I love the experience. Where we're to get to. Now it's all about me. I want to help them achieve that. But uh, I, I can come across and I can listen to what they're doing. I can I can relate to them. They're young. I've just turned thirty two. So I'm I'm young. I'm uh, fresh. So I, they fresh. can still relate to me. They they, have, they can tell me anything they want to do, and then I can teach them the way I like to be. Because obviously I've put on four stones since since, <laughs> since January. <laughs> and then obviously I'm thinking to myself. I need to go training over the next few months because you don't want to have a fat coach. Uh, and the way and, 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 and the way I want to train, I wouldn't like to just shout it. I uh, would like to demonstrate it. Aye, aye you need and to. And fuck being in the middle of the ring when you've got about ten or twelve wee guys, all Scottish champions, all skinny and six packs to fucking they'll watch them had fat guys try to throw, <laughs> throw combinations. Aye, I wouldn't be me, but I would like to. I'll be back in shape and I'll hang you about. But the way I like to um, teach some days by actually demonstrating it mm-hmm. and that's Aye. the way I like to show that's the best that's how people learn in it because it's one thing 100%. to tell you this that and the next thing but and if it, they're seeing it with their own eyes and it's having the patience as well to like some people know everybody know what you're going to tell somebody not everybody's going to date that nah, way that nah, you want to date nah. so it's having the patience some people are going to box on the back foot the front foot some people southpaw orthodox mm. you've got to adjust to them Aye. you can't just have, I want everybody to box the way I box. One size doesn't fit all. Doesn't work like that, you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to kind of adjust that out, out that. So that's what I'm, I'm, I can feel myself being good at that. And my dad will trust me with letting me do with all the rest of all the boys as a pro. But mm-hmm. it's two different, even though it's boxing, it's two different sports. Aye. Amateur and pro, it's two different things. So now they're starting to get involved trying to merge together so now you could be a pro and go into an amateur tournament. Aye, that's mental. <laughs> so you you could be a world champion and go box in the Olympics when for your country. When did you start that? The last Olympics. So it happened, I think, I'm sure it first came about in 2016. Then it happened in 2020 in Tokyo. Is people being doing it? Aye, aye, but maybe no pure high level pros, but some people, aye, some it's not, bit. No, in the case of a, a world champion doing it, but it's they could do it. But they can do it. Aye, they can do it. Can Which do it. is mad, so like, you might see it down the line, but like, so for instance, Tyson Fury could go into uh, the Olympics. Olympics. I suppose. Aye. But if you're getting into the Olympics, usually, because if you're fighting amateurs, like Joe Joyce, he was getting stick. Aye. If I can't mind, I don't know if it was maybe fucking Tony Bell or something saying because he was 30, you're, uh, 30 and he was beating like 20 year olds and that. Like you're a grown fucking so, man. So see, but that's the thing, isn't it? That's what happens. So, see, when I was in Sheffield, when I was talking about we stayed in Sheffield and we had to go down there, aye. that was my roommate. Who? Joe Joyce. Was it? Aye? Aye. No danger. <laughs> we both got, so see the British Championships 2011? Aye. We both won. Right. You win that, you go into GB. Mm-hmm. And he won, he beat my mate Ross. And, eh. Uh, we both got on a GB, so he was my roommate. Fucking hell, man. Small, Small just, world, mate. He's went on to do what he's went on ah, to no, do. He's, you know what I mean? he's I doing really well, man. He's just the nicest big guy. So I remember sitting, so sitting, obviously he's quiet, he's big guy in the world, but back then he was even more quiet. So sitting watching the telly and I was like, you have to know, like, well, what are we doing? He was like, so he, before he became a boxer over at the gym, he was a cheerleader in America. Joe Joyce was? You ever notice why there's backflips and cartwheels in the middle of the ring when he, after the fights? <laughs> How the fuck did he end up becoming a cheerleader? That's what he was. A he's cheerleader the most in athlete, America? He's the most athletic guy you've ever experienced. Is he? So see if you watch his fights. big boy. Watch his fights. See at the end of all his fights. He Aye. does a backflip. I've never noticed. I've never watched like, fucking it today. You to imagine? He's 6'6", six, 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 on. He's a fucking big guy. And he is, he he was a cheerleader. He does this mad dance and there's backflips, kicks and he. He, he was what a was he a cheerleader for? Like, like the NFL or something? Or just like... Just didn't hang him. He was, he was a How the fuck did he end up doing that? Then, he, then he's, he's, got a de- he's got a degree in art. Has he? Very, very, very clever, eh? And he just became... He's an absolute unit. A machine. Just machine. And uh, one of the nicest guys ever. So he was, he was my fucking roommate. Me, him and a boy called Sam Maxwell at the time. But he's just re- he was retired as well. He just boxed on a big show in the sky. He's done really well for himself as well. But I was a roommate. But Joe Joyce was my fucking roommate. That is fucking That was in 2000, between 2011 and 2012. Fuck's it. I just always me just mentioned that and you knew these I, fucking just, co-pilots. He, he, was, he, was, he was my roommate. I don't know what's more mental that story the fact he's a fucking he was a cheerleader. I could to, not believe it. You used to eat all your food and all that. But you got to say to him, man. Fucking, <laughs> 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 fucking eat you. Oh, but what a nice, born nice guy. But he's a share, he's the share room. Room. Oh, that's fucking my, mental, man. He's my roommate. Fuck's sake, <laughs> small world, bro. But what was uh, the biggest challenge being a boxer for you? Making weight. Is it the making weight? Aye. Uh, that's see, what everybody see, says. See, I because I've always been fat inside. Mm-hmm. I've always been a wee fat guy, and it's just incredible. Like, if you ask my mates and even ask Heather, my bud, the amount of food that I can consume is scary. Aye. Uh, 
scary. Uh, is that because you were depriving yourself? Of it? You had to. Yeah, it was like you were up to, like, uh, I, hunger. I, I, I just always like, see if you deprive yourself see, of something. You want it more. But see, because I don't drink or take drugs. Nah, it's that's, a one that's been my thing. Mm-hmm. So you think about it, mate. I've toured. I've. I could probably say 90% I've toured 90% I take away in Glasgow <laughs> somebody puts up but then it goes with I take away passport it goes with the boxing with boxing you get sponsorships so the best thing I've ever happened to me is sponsored after Tony's Pizza Deer I've seen that man Tony DeBrenko is an absolute hero he, oh, honestly, mate, he's, his so he, he sponsored me since 2015 one of the very first person that came on board and he was on board for the then to my last fight is he busy just doing just playing you with his man and, and, but anything I ever needed, they would always sort me out with yeah. medicals. Nice guy, always had him on my shorts. Anything a day in life, I'll always have made a powerful life in him. Mm-hmm. But him, his munchies after every fight, up there. But I mean, you cannot beat the pizza. His the dough balls, I, I know, man. Had, 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 spicy so you, you think that. of that menu? I've sampled everything on that menu. Fucking everything. Hell, then the same thing when me and Heather, when we got engaged a couple of years ago at an engagement party. He supplied twenty five pizzas for the buffet. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't make my engagement party because he was him and his wife now cafe that we got to Dubai. All uh, right. And he was like, I, "I'll sort that out." So you imagine, everybody came to my buff, my get wedding, my engagement party for the Tonys. I don't care what they came. For. <laughs> was, I swear, I see the DJ. Do you know the DJ gets up? Uh, you know, like the buffet is open in ten minutes. It was like it was like Black Friday. Clint's pure scrap there each other. Black Friday. Mate. Rest in pizza boxes. Uh, the, the, the first thing I done, the guy at the time who delivers them, obviously I'm pals with them all because obviously I've been. First thing I done is put a, a pizza in the boot. Well, you obviously had to save that for later. For the way home, obviously I I wouldn't do as you say. I was drinking, so I was driving. You, so first thing, man, sixty inch pepperoni, pizza, spicy chicken pizza, right in the back of things. Then man. within, honestly, that will probably be the quickest buffet we'd go to like an Indian as well for people who didn't like it. Nobody was even looking at Indian. People just scrant Tony's pizza. Nah, man. mate. Honestly, but, I think I need to try and see Chin the Bull Tony for a sponsorship. T- t- Tony, he. Get me some free pizzas, he, mate. He, I'll sample your menu. Now he's a movie. I'll sodomise his menu. Tony's pizza here, that's the thing. So, see, after every fight, and that was always my, my buzz. I had one last week, it was amazing. Oh, it's dude. always as good. Put me in your mood for one, I might get one this weekend. But he's always, he's the. Still to this day, he's always a good man. But he sponsored me, I say, since 2015. And then you've got a, a lot of people. That's what people don't see is the people who come on board. I said my work was kind of the main thing because that su- supplies your weekly wage, uh, like yeah, when, yeah. even when you're training. But I had Tony and the guy had 40, 40 clothing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Harry and stuff, done a brown job. Me supplied all my kit, all my da, all his kit, with all, every, all clay, brown, you know what I mean? People don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. So if you see, I had my first one, Paul Simpson, he got me a motor. <laughs> Did he? <really? laughs> he kicked me about now, he paid for my motor. What a legend. At the time, aye. And then guy Douglas for Synergy over the last few years been a massive help. He came on board and kind of he kicked his out, he sorted his out. So we were going down to London for that last fight. I had his all in the best of trackies, the best of everything. Really, eh? Sorted out every, everything. And people don't see that kind I of know, thing. I know, fuck, man. I just think, that obviously, once you start boxing professionally at a certain level, that's you made it. But, but you've not, and it's not. Nah, and a lot of people... And if, of no, th- and see if you don't, you're fucked. Aye. Like, big time, and a lot of people don't see that. So see people come on board the new sponsor stuff, you don't realise how much a massive help it is. And I understand times are obviously hard to know. But the, the thing, and if you've got a good boy to do it and folly you'll have the best buzz like the guy Paul Simpson I had when he came he's like he came in my fight in Belfast and when I put the boy even though I lost the fight I put the boy down and he always says all the fights he's travelled the world been to Mayweather fight he said that's been the best buzz he's ever had was when I put that boy down in Belfast Fuck he's, sake, he's man. never experienced anything like in my life in his that life mental what's it like to hear something like that I know it's your life. you don't realise the stupid things that you, uh, you don't realise it's like the kind of like the, what the, you would the do to people, even, even like I would be in people's houses walking and obviously I'm a joiner so you'd be in people's houses in cash smoking and I've said we had to get photos with you guys and all that uh, really I uh, did you get recognised quite a lot of you I had people it knew my work but just in general like get kicking about me and Heather will be away something and Heather always say it. we can't go anywhere without somebody knowing mm. you for boxing yeah. which is a good thing and ah, I'll always sit and I'll always talk to you I'll just sit and talk to cunts nah. <laughs> ah, of course <laughs> man it's a cunt sort of watching you fight I'll come, and you've got to go well but you can't be pure arrogant man and yeah, fucking come fuck across that, that man. way it's a cunt that's supported you, you know but what the, I mean? the, the response but with the eating thing that's been the hardest part about it with eating but having that was easily the best sponsor I've had that's brilliant man and it, he, he sorted me out with so much and still to this day I just always love his pizzas couple of times once a month I'll always get them just message them like, ah, alright I, I might get one this weekend alright all right, Tony Maybe boy alright alright Tony boy how are you doing how are you doing T how are you doing T <laughs> Tony the Tiger but I'm actually going up to see him 
if it's not this weekend or next weekend I'm going to get a photo with him and say thing just to say I thank you for the last eight years uh, and mm. obviously I have pizza uh, <laughs> grab a pizza about your after but he supplied 20 odd pizzas at my engagement party oh man that's a legend yeah man I just like foot even then he just was I like that's my pizza and he came to every fight came to London came to Manchester came to you name it he was there mm. him and his wife came, came everywhere fantastic man it was just, just to, but people like that is what help you out but you don't see but I've always had a good relationship with everybody you know uh, what I mean? it goes like, a long way when you establish oh, a good relationship they become more than sponsors as you say become come, lifelong pals and as you say they'll always give him the thing and I'll always no matter if anybody asks what, where to go for a pizza it's always there uh, that's no matter it, where that's a uh, alpha I think, I think you fucking sold even, it me e, so e, you can get a e, like even, at, even when we were all going on Christmas nights out of our boxing he would always be like you're coming to mine he was sort of the boys would they eh? uh, what a legend man he'd always go to his restaurant and sort of the boys it. now he's got lucky bees I've been <laughs> so I, I was to try so the same I idea was that, it was like his, um, once all your boys once the, you've all had your fights and stuff I'll sort it out I it check out the Lucky Bees mate it's banging yeah, check out Lucky Bees people Lucky Bees and Tony's Pizza there big Tony's uh, laughing he meditated part of sponsor so <laughs> I'm <laughs> fucking on the free promo Tony I can't get the sitting finger out I'm sitting here next week with an 18 inch pepperoni pizza sitting oh, there oh I mean I can fucking do that for every episode <laughs> mate, I'm I'm I'll not get a word in but man <laughs> but uh, so that's pretty much the end of the podcast for me, man. It's let's see, it was great to chat to you. And fucking again, as people don't know, the fucking cameras <laughs> cut out the first time we've done this the second <laughs> time, the chat. Second time but week. it was good to hear your stories again, man. It's fucking, it's brilliant, man. It's such an inspiration. And the fact you've been so disciplined, and the fact you've never drank, is good. It's, people need a role model for that, and especially in Scotland, because all you see is like it's fucking I drugs and alcohol it. everywhere, man. They need something that's positive the, that goes the, like, listen to what I've for My mates have said that so, so sorry before we stopped, sorry. So I've never listened to the but I've seen you there been a bit on TikTok and stuff and just coming up on everybody's mad Instagram stories and yeah. that. Then a few weeks ago, me and two of my best mates, Jordan Barrett, Hull Shaggles. <laughs> we, we, were no at, we were actually away up in my hill in Fort William. Well then I think it's called the the ring of steel it's called it's like foam and rose in the one day mm. so coming back for the other it was like five or six o'clock at night we're all shattered so we're like, what do we put on so we're listening to Rayleigh's gaff and we end up listening to you on Rayleigh's gaff <laughs> listen to all your mad fucking <laughs> stories about your life and all that stuff and I was like obviously I've seen you about so I was like I'm I was like, I'm going to fucking follow him I quite like that and then the next day you messaged to go on your podcast just weird how things I mean it's it. mental see when you followed me I thought because I was on Big J's podcast I, it was, I, thought, I was like he's obviously must follow Big J and then uh, then when that's what it's I just so fuck. random it's as mental. anything so we we'll listen to you on Rayleigh's gaff and then I swear they used to love just call people hull shaggers man I swear it was the funniest thing ever so they were pausing you in the middle of the road and shouting hull shaggers to random cunts <laughs> and then putting you <laughs> then putting you back on then you're listening to your stories but it was uh, it was good to listen to you just to hear that side of because people on there is, is, is real and uh, uh, people, it, people going and lie I don't understand what you, what's, the, what's the difference you try and hide behind this persona but then man. somebody would always know you then comment and don't tell that's you, pure you lie found out, that's that, the only reason I was because you see lie. a lot of cunts like day podcast and that not to name anybody but they go on and they oh, Pure, they keep their, their cards close to their chest and I'm like that eventually shit I've done is going to come out Enough. it's going to come and out so may as well come out for but, me first but people would come out in today in bad press to try to, try to bring you down but because if you come out and date yourself you've already put it out you so you can't slag it and, people's already, your truth. and if people still listen to you they've already accepted it ah, so, that's exactly that, that you need to own your truth and that's that it's like, that sense of relatability people, it, was, man, because it was just funny just coming back just coming back with the hill shaggers man and then listening to you listening to talking about the your time going to pull and all that shit and listening and stopping it then listening it again up. then I and all your different things and then following you and then the next day you messaged and then nice. I sent it to because they, they two boys had listened to you mm. and obviously when I had sent the the boy my my pal Dom he was the same when I told him you were going he was buzzing he was like that's fucking class but then my my pal obviously they two and I sent that in he was like that's weird how that works out then listen to you on Man Rayleigh's gaff it was funny ah it's crazy it was fucking man. funny check me out in Rayleigh's gaff <laughs> best was, episode they've ever that, done that, <laughs> that was that was funny that was the first time I'd listened to you on a, I'd seen you doing your sketches and stuff but no your story ah uh, yeah yeah which yeah. You, you see all the mask at your this is fucking funny ah uh, it makes it make sense doesn't it <laughs> it makes it make sense uh, right. but I mate everything. fucking a pleasure having you on mate such a great chat such a great guy I've got one last question it's for my Patreon mm -hmm. Rebecca she's asking what do you think have been the biggest changes in the boxing landscape in the last 20 years in terms of training, promotion, etc.? Everything, social media. Social media, do you think that's been the biggest change? How so? 100%. In the last 20 years ago, you didn't have, what did you have 20 years ago? Bebo? 
Nadie was nah, posting. Nah, it wasn't even twenty years ago, was it? No, nah, Bebo was like two thousand and nine. So Nadie's posting. Nadie was posting about that. Now you can't do anything in your life if it's something been on Instagram mm. or Facebook. Aye. Like if you were to follow any boxer now, you get to watch for the moment they wake up to every training session. Aye. To go to the gym, to go on how they trained for the full camp. Whereas before you didn't, you seen them in the ring, and then that was it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whereas it's opened it up even people having posters to promote fights. That's not a thing anymore. I can't just can sell people, their own tickets. People just had the posters with the boxers' mobile number at the bottom. Of it. Aye. If you want some of these tickets, you just go on your know, social media, message them, say, "All right, mate, can I buy two tickets?" Aye. And cunts can get can do all different kind of things to promote. People it, get access, I mean. but that's the biggest thing in the change of boxing. There's obviously boxing is never going to change. It still hit the guy and don't let him. It's still two cunts punching fuck each other. Aye. Hit the guy and don't let him hit you. That's never going to change. Mm-hmm. But the actual position of it, how it's getting noticed about now, it's YouTubers fighting. Obviously, you're fighting Kaz Mulligan. Where do you know that? But there's, fight me. there's YouTubers <laughs> and it's it's just put new eyes on boxing. Aye. People who never watched boxing before will watch boxing. Obviously, it's a different standard, but it's still, still boxing. Ah, it's still fans. It's, it's still, still fans of the sport. So people will watch that for different things, but I think, and that's purely by you, as you say, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, the social media has brought a different eyes on it, and now everything is now reviewed on social media, everything. Mm-hmm. So that's how, and it's good. It's certainly good. Aye. Uh, people have got their, you'll you have shite boxers who have brilliant Instagrams and brilliant social medias they'll make a fortune because they can sell themselves ah we've got that like, with Paige Van Zandt and that she's like in the UFC uh, man and she, they, just, they've built a, a, built a platform people for have built a platform just, after, the just after that so they could they could be shit at boxing fight dafty but they'll always make dough in that because they've got some following aye and if people's always going to people are going to like you and they're going to watch you exactly man whether you're shit or no boxer all day a lot more than a talented boxer whether you're shit or whether you're shit mm-hmm. or no you could be the worst boxer in the world but if you've got if you're funny and you go on well with people and everybody likes you 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 get on big shows and that's just how it works nah, it's, it's, it's a sad reality all <laughs> but i say it's sad reality it's but true. it can work for some people as well it can be a good thing as well it can be a good thing and bad thing so but i just kind of i, I kind of put that everything on social media like your full day but everybody does it like the boys Aye. in my gym nathaniel and reagan and it's the right thing Mm-hmm. No, they they can sell tickets without even thinking uh, about it. They can get the best of sponsors. They can get everything because just the way of I think it's just a generation. Isn't it? Ah, so it's a generational thing, hundred percent. Now everything you do, man, you walk past. You get the times. Every country's in the park, follow me, follow me, TikToks. We guys make TikToks. That wasn't a thing. If you're a wee guy, you get your phone to Gaffy and Leonard. I know, in. man. And you're using it fucking play that play fucking tunes or something. Like that, some PC well, DJ well, disses. Well, you're selling your speakers with the two mad old Sony Ericsson Ah, you fucks at the times. I mean, and now you've got fucking people taking out fucking tripods to the park. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> <don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, mate. It's a different time, totally, man. I but uh, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, mate. Oh, absolute definitely. joy to speak to you again, man. But everybody, Joe Ham, like, subscribe, and don't get wide. Catches.